Okay, hold still, Play-Doh. This is the comfiest hat you'll ever wear. Probably the only hat you'll ever wear. <laughs> the hat taps into the bill sensors so we can see what kind of information she's picking up. Jimmy, I'm getting it. I'm picking something up. What is it? Come on, hearing, smell, sight, touch, or... Taste? No, 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 and no. It's none of the five senses. The platypus has a sixth sense. She's psychic? <laughs> no, an extra sense. One we don't even have. Electro-reception. Electro-what? Plato can sense electrical charges. Ready for visual, Koki. Activating platypus cam. Cool. It works! This is the info the platypus gets from those sensors. It works kind of like our touch sensors, but instead of being pressed like a button, these sensors are activated by tiny electrical charges given off by objects. See, Plato's picking up the electrical charges from those rocks, knows they're there, and doesn't bump into them. Wow, what's that? Crayfish. <laughs> right on. Now that's a sweet video game. And a totally cool sixth sense. The helmet recorded the signals that I need for the platypus sensory power. I'm on it. Mwah. Plato, did I mention you're a genius? <laughs> Pretty sandy. <laughs> Who's that digger? <gasps> An aardvark! And her baby. Oh, wow. He's funny looking cute. Aw, isn't that sweet? Amazing. What a way to start our mission. The mysterious, nobody ever gets a chance to see them, secretive beyond belief, aardvark. Let's go. Whoa, nice claws. They're like mini shovels on the end of each finger. <laughs> Thanks, pal. Hot diggity digger, got it! We use the front claws to scoop, the back feet to clear the earth away, and the tail to scrabble the dirt flat. She's the best natural digging machine in the world. Tortuga, come in. Any luck with the burrows, guys? Great luck. We've just come across an aardvark and her baby. In fact, we've got a new home being built right now. Uploading its location for the master map. We've got it, Chris. Huh? Okay, so this is a hard what? <laughs> aardvark. It's an aardvark. Got it. Aardvark. Never heard of it. Even though they're nicknamed earth pigs, aardvarks are actually more closely related to elephants. Yeah, but they're really one of a kind with claws as strong as a pickaxe. I never knew fingernails could build a house. She's got beautiful fingernails and so thick they don't break. Guys, get ready to have the most gorgeous fingernails around. Gorgeous nails? Don't you mean digging power? Yeah, that's what I said. Gorgeous nails. I'm getting to work adding that power digger to the creature power suit. Zap out. <gasps> Uh-oh. Did you hear that laughing sound? Yeah, I like laughing, but not that kind. <laughs> nope, nothing funny about that. <laughs> Spotted hyena. Uh-oh. Hyenas are serious predators for lots of creatures out here, including aardvarks. <gasps> she can't get back to her burrow, so it's plan B. Dig an escape hole. Aardvarks can do that in five minutes flat. Oh yeah, good thing she had a head start. Oh no, it's not deep enough yet. She's gotta buy herself time. Those claws are good for something other than digging. The slash defense. The hyena didn't like that one bit. Yes, she did it. Now I know why holes are so important out here. Safety. Whoa! This backpack's a lot heavier when I'm running from a hyena. <sighs> oh. 
That's it! The baby crocs are calling for their mom. We gotta make more noise. Louder, everybody! <coughs> Aviva, check it out! Topside! She hears them! Guys, she hears you! I can't believe it! She's coming to the rescue! Maybe I was wrong about her. All right! Nice croaking, gang. Hey, Champella, don't stop now. Here's Mama. Whoa! I never thought I'd be so happy to see that face. Uh, on second thought... She's eating her babies? I told you, oh, these crocodiles! Just when I was starting to trust them. It's fine. She's not eating them. She's just picking them up. She knows how sharp her teeth are, so she's super careful. Huh? Martin, it's comfy in here, too. <laughs> her throw pouch holds 20 of us. She's even taking the baby turtles. That's nice of her. OK, I think we got a full load. Bus is packed and ready to go. But where are you guys going? To the water! Full crock ahead! I can't believe it. Now I'm totally blown away. Croc moms are... are... We know. They freak you out. No! They're the coolest! What kind of mom is more dedicated, more committed? They're amazing! Okay. First and only stop. The crash. That's a fancy word for the nursery pool. A nice, calm, quiet section of the river. Everybody out! Oh, hey, everybody's looking good. You know, baby crocs are expert swimmers from the minute they're born. And Mama's off to get the rest of the kid crocs. We'll keep an eye on these ones for you. Zippy, come on, slow down. Or at least don't take off until I catch up. I've got to see how you do it. What's your trick to being one of the only gliding lizards in the world? How's it going, MK? <laughs> going up, but not as fast as Zippy. Hey, tell Chris to hurry. I could use some help. Yeah, about that. Okay, I got ropes, boots. Yeah, Chris, do your climbing thing. Oh, who am I kidding? Just thinking about climbing is making my knees lock up. I've lost my climbing mojo. I've come down with... A fear of heights? Hey, Chris. I know a lot about fear. I'm afraid of the dirt between my toes, losing my controller, and heights, too. But check it out. That's why I play with this. Chris Kratz Climbing Extreme. I programmed in all your moves. That's the swing, flip, with the lemur landing. Just play this, see? You'll get all your moves back. Oh, yes. <laughs> <sighs> nice one, Jimmy. You just made him feel worse. I'm gonna go for a walk, not a climb, just a walk. Control tower to pilot. You're cleared for takeoff. Sippy the Draco Lizard is lining it up. Face down is the takeoff position. Are you kidding me? That tree must be almost 60 meters away. Can you glide that far? <gasps> a little breeze coming in from the east. Can you handle it, Sippy? Okay, now show us your creature power, little buddy. What's your secret? <gasps> what? You've got wings! Where did those come from? Huh? That's not gliding. Whoa! Okay, now we're the right size to solve the squirmiest, wormiest mystery of all. Why do worms come out in the rain? The answer is somewhere down here in the worm world. All right, we need worm clues. So let's start with the worm. Its body is like a giant pink water balloon with about 136 segments, even tiny hairs, and a head with no eyes. Hey, Chris, you're talking to the wrong end. Right, Pinky? No, I'm not. You're talking to the wrong end. Uh, no, you are. No, you are. Oh, you are. That's the worm's behind. No, the funny-looking Band-Aid feature is right. Uh, you looking for this? Uh, yeah, that. 
How could you forget this face? No eyes, no ears, no nose. Just one big mouth. Ugh. Now that's a <laughs> slimy one. And the funnest thing about worms? Slime! <gasps> Pinky's on the move. All the worms are on the move. I wonder, could this be a clue? Maybe if we follow the worms into their holes, we'll know why they come up again when it rains. Well, partner, let's just get a move on and find out then. Right up, worm boy! Woo, let's rustle us up some worm clues. Hop on, partner. Worm's going underground. Yeah! Hey, wait for me! <laughs> Whoa, hey, the worm gave me the slip. Whoa! Wow, check out these tunnels. Whoa, the worms can really tunnel through this moist soil. Hmm. It's wet down here. Chris, come on, speak up. Remember what Dad always said, no mumbling. It's wet down here. Not listening to a mumbler. Wet, wet, it's wet down here. Why didn't you just say so? Look, all the rainwater is seeping down into the ground. When it rains, the underground worm world soaks up the water like a sponge. If there's so much water under there, when it rains really heavily, the tunnels might get completely flooded. Yeah, I always thought worms came up so they don't drown underground. Yeah, me too. Grab on! Whoa! <laughs> Chris really needs something to help them get around underground. Where are you going, Chris? To another clue! Whoa! Whoa! I hope. Ugh. Sperm well at six o'clock! Whoa! Now that's a huge whale! Uh, no, that's a huge whale! Whoa! Mother sperm whale and her calf. Whoa. <laughs> Is that big enough inspiration for you, Aviva? Might be. It might be. Whale powers. Let's see, a sperm whale can dive deeper than any other whale. She has flexible ribs that can fold up under intense pressure. And she has a thick layer of fat to keep her warm in the cold, deep waters. I can learn a lot from these whales. This is going to be the best creature power suit yet. Whoa! What was that? It's coming from the Big Mama sperm whale's head! Okay, it's true. Sperm whales are the loudest animal in the world. They're echolocating on us. Yeah, that booming sound comes out of her big bumpy head bounces off us, the sound waves travel back to her lower jaw, which takes the sound up to her ear. Then to her brain. That's what you call sonar. And the sperm whale gets a sound picture of us. Or her lunch. She gulped down hundreds in one mouthful. That's like a bathtub full of squid in one bite. And she can eat eight bathtubs full of slimy squid a day. Aw, look how closely the calf follows his mom. He's cute. I'd say looks about a year old. I'd say, looks like a little rascal. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to come up with a funny, playful little name for this guy. Hmm. Can't be too little of a name. He's already as big as a minivan, following a mom who's as big as a school bus. They're heading towards you, Tortuga. Wow, the sperm whale is the largest tooth predator that ever lived on planet Earth. There she blows. <laughs> Sperm whales rule the sea or what? Almost, but not quite. They can get ganged up on by pods of hunting killer whales. Drifting fishing nets called ghost nets tangle them up. 
And then there are the stories of epic battles with giant squid. But no one's ever seen it because they meet in the deep. What's going on up there? The whales are each taking a big breath in through their blowhole. A whale breath is the same amount of air that fills a car. They must be getting ready for a deep dive. Yeah, going deeper looking for bigger squid. Oh, <laughs> hey, we're not a beach ball or a bumper boat. Bumper, that's it, your bumper. The newest member of the Wildcrats team. Here we go. Nobody's ever followed hunting sperm whales into the depths. We're with you, bumper. Okay, Aviva, how deep can this sub go? Deeper than any mobile sub ever created by humans. Whoa, she's hunting. She knows her prey needs to surface to breathe, so she lies in wait, ambush style, for what's swimming below to pop up. Could be a beluga whale or a seal. Or maybe... I think the crew might want to see this. Deploy fly cam. Hmm. A walrus! <laughs> 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 Martin usually wears blue, but he looks pretty good in green. <laughs> if the crap rose had a comedy show, I'd totally watch it. I think we just did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do we have a lock on their coordinates, Koki? Yep. 66 degrees north, 65 degrees west. Now, it looks like there's a hectic blizzard to the west, but the bros are all clear. Ready for liftoff, Jimmy Z? Not yet. The joystick is stuck! Oh, so that's where it went. Oh. Teleportation delivery is out of here. Polar bears need to be patient and focused. Unlike you, Martin. But they can wait for hours for their prey to pop up. What do you think? Oh, wait's over. Huh? What's that? Hey guys, did you get the package? Yeah, but your delivery was a little off. <laughs> nice reaction time, dude! <laughs> Our weak kicker won! Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay, whenever you're ready, I've modified your creature power suits for Arctic survival. You know the drill? Touch the animal, hit the button, and listo! You got creature power! What? I was almost chewed by a polar bear, and now I have to touch one to activate my suit? <laughs> Ciao! Ah, she's parking her cub, telling him to stay behind while she hunts. Better listen, Poby. Poby? Yeah, Poby. Polar bear, Poby. They don't see me. My iceberg disguise is working. Somebody pinch me. Ow! I didn't mean literally. Well, it looks like the Brainless Brothers have a dancing bear. <laughs> Not for long. Look at that. She blends right into the ice and snow. With that Arctic camouflage, the walrus don't even see her. Oh, it just gets better. Oh, the more dancing varmints, the merrier. Oh, the crowd's gonna love it. And Isaac Varmintech will be so rich, it'll make your head spin. Hey, I didn't mean literally. Now, go catch those poppies. Whoa, she's attacking! The walrus can hardly move up here. They're like big blubbery caterpillars. Made it! Barely! The bear is in control on land, and the walrus rules the water. Whoa! Whew! We've been working non-stop. How about a snack break? Huh? Bark? You're kidding me. You expect me to eat a bark sandwich? Oh, you're eating that soft inner layer of bark, the cambium. Huh. Uh, can I at least get some jelly with that? <laughs> bark sandwiches are popular around here. Wow, the habitat the beaver makes even helps creatures like a moose. Moose eat water plants from the beaver pond and love to eat the bark and twigs from new plants that grow in here. Do you realize how special you are? Wood, mud. No other animal can do what you do. Collect supplies to build something 
that completely changes the environment. Look, Timber, it's filling up. We're doing it, Timber. The pond is coming back. By the way, I get that the pond is great for so many creatures around here, but why do beavers need a pond? Yikes, wolf, Timber, look out. Ah, the beaver tail slap. That's an alarm sound that tells all the other beavers to the water. <gasps> Woohoo! Get it, I get it. The pond is your safety zone. When you're in the water, you've got one up against a wolf or any other predator. Some animals use quills to defend themselves or a hard shell. You create a huge safety zone of water by using your dam building skills. <laughs> All clear. Martin, come in. Go, Chris. We're ready for more logs on the dam. One more load and we'll be able to bring all the animals home. Oh, no problem. We've got the last load all set to go. More wood coming right up. What? No, 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 not that way! Oh, no. <gasps> oh, stop. Oh, whew. <laughs> I thought it was gonna land right on our dam. No! <laughs> Oops, well, you said you needed more wood. This windstorm came out of nowhere. We're not going anywhere. We're too light. I know, we're running out of energy, fast. Oh, is that, it's, that's Maxilla. Oh, number 12, with the curled antenna. She's going down, and so are we. When you're in trouble, nature's know-how can pull you through. Hey, a boat. Whoa, everybody's waiting out the windstorm. Yeah, a butterfly only weighs about as much as three tissues. So when it's windy or rainy, they just have to sit tight. <laughs> I wonder who the nice people are that are letting us all rest on their boat. Butterflies, <gasps> get them. No free rides today. Catch those barrettes, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Wind levels are down, ready for takeoff. Hurry, dude, here comes Stavio! Whoa! Ooh, nice day for a swim. I will get those butterfly barrettes if I have to go to the end of the earth to do it. Mission Monarch, day 36. The cold weather is on its way up here. All the milkweed plants that the monarch caterpillars need to eat are dying. With no food and cold weather on its way, it's no wonder the monarch's headed down to warmer weather. Chris, Martin, and Maxilla have made it 1,600 kilometers and counted. We've just received word from a creature teamer that they made it to Georgia about two-thirds of the way to Mexico. Hey, want to see a loop-de-loop? -loop? Whoa! Yeah, Maxilla, we're doing about 190 kilometers a day. Pretty good pace. <laughs> I'd say it'll be smooth sailing from here. Maxilla, she's gone. Gone? Where'd she go? There! Oh no! You're right, Martin. Now she does need our help. <laughs> Hang on, Maxilla. I'll get you out. Martin, uh, behind you! <gasps> Uh-oh. I'm too late. Nice, Spider. Okay, we're just passing through. Whoa! Oh, got you, bro. I can't believe it. Why did the spider cut her loose? Why did he let her go? Monarchs taste bad. Yeah, I'll stick to hot dogs. No, really, it says right here that they're poisonous. Look at this. 
All it takes is for a predator to try eating a monarch once, and he gets so sick that he'll never eat another one as long as he lives. So that's why the spider didn't eat Maxilla. He knows monarchs are poisonous. Wow. It really helps to have a few tricks like that when you're on a 4,800 kilometer journey. Over forests, through cities, until after 3,200 kilometers, the butterflies have to pass through this thin strip of land to their final destination, Mexico. Oh, oh the honey badger is tough. So tough. A lion will think twice about tangling with him. Wow! That puts the honey badger right up there with the African honeybee on the tough meter Tie for now. And the honey badger has a fierce sweet tooth, too. He's still following the honey guide. Honey badger and honey guide. Now that is a dynamic duo. Let's program some creature power suits. I'm with you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, who wants Honey Guide Powers and who wants Honey Badger? Ooh, oh, honey, honey, badger, badger, honey, badger, honey Badger! Honey Badger! Honey Badger over here! Did you have to ask? Hey, it's my turn for the more powerful creature. Chris, I had Caterpillar Powers last time. Well, a butterfly isn't exactly powerful. I should have the Badger Powers because that lion's mad at me for bumping him. I gotta watch my back. Yeah, but if I had Badger Powers, I could watch your back. Uh, guys, you're not gonna have any powers. Because the animals you have to touch to get the powers are getting away! <gasps> mm -hmm. Uh huh. What? He is following <gasps> Wildcrats! And honey! The little bird did it! Let us right to the honey! And now it's the honey badger's turn to do his thing. Whoa, nobody can be that tough. Ooh, he's gonna get so stung. <laughs> Ow, I feel your pain. No animal can survive that many bee stings. He's gonna run. I didn't see that coming. Whoa! <laughs> of course. Honey badgers are members of the weasel family. And they shoot a stinky spray from beneath their tails. Just like his cousin the skunk. Except the honey badger also uses his stinky spray like a living can of bee repellent. <laughs> <laughs> can his smell be ferocious? <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> but if it can, <laughs> this one is. Oh. He'll actually attack a swarm of stinging bees and stand up to a lion. The honey badger is the toughest animal in Africa. Yup, he scores a 9.5 on the Wildcrats tough meter The toughest yet. But as tough as he is, he still has a little friend. Sweet Tweet and Tuffo. Two very different creatures working together. One is the guide, one grabs the goods. And they both get food. Now that's a cool symbiotic relationship. And I can finally have breakfast. <laughs> Back up, Martin. Black rhinos are the most ready to charge rhinos in the world. Relax. If we don't move, she can hardly see us. Poor eyesight, remember? But the nose and ears are super sensitive. That rhino will charge if we sound or even smell like a threat. I took a shower. Did you? Shh. How about cleaning those ears? Oh. <laughs> I mean the ox peckers. Crawling right into the rhino's ears. Picking ticks like flying Q-tips. The rhinos get their ears cleaned. The birds get a meal. Both get something out of the deal. It's an amazing symbiotic relationship. Oh, yeah? I think the coolest part is that the rhino can chill out and eat, because the ox pecker will sound the danger alarm. Dude, you got me on that one. Uh, did we just set off the rhino alarm? Yep, we set it off. 
Did you see that? See it? I felt it. Ouch. No, I mean the ox peckers hung on even when the rhino charges. Now that's the coolest thing. I win. Okay, you got me. But what I don't get is who would want to mess with the third heaviest land mammal on the planet and take on that charge? So that's who the rhino was going for. We were just in the way. They're after the calf. <laughs> Amazing! That's a 1300 kilogram mega mammal with some fancy footwork. I've heard of toss salad, but toss the lions? Incoming! Ooh, that horn is a serious weapon. Rhino defense is awesome. Uh huh? Oh no, I just tuned it up. I like it, gives her character. You know, that made no sense. Black rhinos are solitary. They'd never stampede in a huge herd. It's unnatural. Gotta see if my bass programming works. I thought, hey, what's better designed for swimming than a fish? I'm itching to see if I made some progress on the aqua dynamics. But how long does it take to find a fish? Depends if you're going for largemouth or smallmouth bass. I'm looking for largemouth. Smallmouth in a snap. Largemouth. <sighs> smallmouth. Either bass will do. What's the diff? They're different species who live in different habitats. The smallmouth bass is smaller, and its jaw goes just under its eye. The largemouth bass is bigger. Jaw goes behind its eye, giving it a larger mouth. Smallmouth bass live in groups. Largemouth bass go it alone. Smallmouth like rocky areas and love to eat crayfish. Largemouth lurk in weedy spots and munch sunfish. Smallmouth bass are scrappy and great jumpers. Largemouth get really, really big. Okay, whichever one you want. Just touch a bass, activate the creature power suit, and test the bass powers. Okay, I'm on it. I'm under it. <laughs> Permission to go ashore, Captain. <laughs> you have the list? Popcorn, candy corns, ice pops. Not the munchies list, Jimmy. The supply list. I've got it. Have a fun time in town. I'm hot. <sighs> yeah, sometimes even the world's most genius inventor needs a day off. No world-changing inventions today, and, uh... No wild crats. <sighs> okay, I'm a big bass. Now where would I hang out? Hmm, I park it somewhere I could spot my prey. Yeah, where I could see them but not be seen. Maybe in here. <gasps> Whoa, nice largemouth bass. Oh yeah, let me just tickle you under the chin. Huh? A school of sunfish. Whoa! You are the largest largemouth bass I've ever seen, and hungry. The way you gulp down sunnies, I've got to call you Gulpa. Hi, Finn. Thanks for the win. Activate creature power suit. Ah, you win some, you lose some. This is the only time to see fireflies. They only come out like this for two weeks of the year. And each lightning bug only flies and flashes for this one time in their whole lives. When they flash, they're talking to each other. The male fireflies fly around and flash to get the attention of the females. The females are on the ground watching the flying flashes. If she likes what she sees, she'll flash back. 
so the fireflies are flashing so they can pair up and lay eggs that turn into glowworms, that turn into fireflies. But what are they saying to each other? It's like a code, a code that we don't know. We've got to figure out the lightning bug code. Bioluminescence. Light created by a living thing. Most light creates heat, but the firefly's glowing belly isn't hot. It creates cold light. How does it work? How do you do it? Blinker. His name's Blinker. How do you know it's Blinker? Oh, I'd recognize him anywhere. Okay, so at the Bug Olympics, how does a firefly hmm? start? What are you doing? I'm telling Blinker a joke and Firefly. At the Bug Olympics, how does a firefly start the race? How? On your mark, get set, glow! <laughs> <laughs> look at the fireflies I caught. All right. Have a good look at them, then let the fireflies go. Danita, she's sucking up all the lightning bugs. She's captured all the male lightning bugs from the meadow. Danita's jet is headed due east. She's heading to her Smoky Mountain mansion. Good job, Koki. Keep tracking her. We've got to go now and rescue them. The fireflies only have this time to flash, lay eggs, and hatch glowworms. If they don't, there will be no fireflies next year. Hold on. How are you going to rescue thousands of lightning bugs? We need a plan. We don't have time for any plans. You know Danita, she'll put them into suspended animation and try to make flashy jewelry or sweatpants out of them. If we're too slow, we're too late. Oh, Blinker, you're still with us. You're the only male firefly left. And he's the secret to the code. If we can crack the flashing code, we should be able to communicate with the lightning bugs and lead them to safety. I already know how to talk firefly. They call me the firefly whisperer. Firefly Whisperer? Who does? Could you guys use a Firefly Disc for your creature power suits? Yeah! I just have to figure out how their bioluminescence works first. Okay, Jimmy, take that luciferase in the green tube and pour it in the large beaker. Hmm? Hmm, that didn't work. And you should probably wash your hair. Okay, I think we're onto something in the weird-looking walrus mystery. Whoa, that's one way to use those weird-looking tusks. Like sled runners to slide across the mucky ocean floor. Then the walrus shoots water into the sediment to break it up. She's looking for something in the mud. Hey, so is Blobby. Whoa, look at those whiskers go. Hey, Blobby, have your whiskers grown in yet? Whiskers, they have 450 of them, give or take a couple. Whoa, their whiskers work like magic fingers in the mud. <laughs> you can't find things with nose hairs. <laughs> My controller! Chill, Jimmy, I made it waterproof. Pudding proof, too. See, just like fingers, each whisker has muscles to move it. So, now we know that walruses use tusks and whiskers to search for something in the muck. But what is it? I know. I'll make a creature attachment for the creature power suits. And maybe you guys can dig in and find out. Hey, waste not, want not. Looks like there's a whole pile of clams right under my yacht. I couldn't be smarter. <laughs> ah, 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 or in more pain. I cut my finger in half! Zack Bart! Zack needs ointment! I don't mind giving Donita the Arctic Pearl to show her I mean business! Big business! Kim. What? Oh no! Oh, hello, Donita. Zach, I'm on my way to collect my fabulous pearl, so you'd better have it ready for me. Uh-huh. Well, take your time. Uh, gotta go! Zackbot! Zackbot! Find that pearl! What was that? Brace yourself, Martin. 
It's a walrus stampede! Whoa! Whoa! Yeah. Oh, oh. oh, something sure spooked those walruses. But now they're back on track. Look, those whiskers have found something. <gasps> a clam! That's what they're looking for down here. Clams! Walruses eat clams too? But how do they get past the shell to the yummy part inside? Oh, I say she'll crush the shell, then eat it. She'll just swallow the thing whole. She'll use her tusk as a can opener. That's it! Walruses suck clams out of their shells with one giant slurp. I'm thinking the little tea devils climb so they can get higher up to get a better sniff on the carcasses. Over there, let's go! We're getting close to the guy's location. What's up, Koki? Aren't you supposed to be keeping track of the tag tea devils? I can't get any work done because rotten meat and carcasses gross me out. I hear you, but as part of the Wild Kratz crew, we're gonna meet all types of animals. Live ones and ones that have died of natural causes. Yeah, but animals that eat rotten stuff, yuck! Hey, somebody's gotta eat maggoty meat. At least it's the tea devils and not us. <laughs> Nothing left but bones, and the tea devils are still munching. Look at all that good stuff inside, bone marrow. That's nutritious food if you can get to it. Yeah, not every animal has the tooth and jaw strength to bust open the bone and get to the marrow. But tea devils do. Hey, stop breathing on my neck. Your teeth are huge. They're growing. Tea devil teeth never stop growing. Why? That's why. Chewing on hard bones wears them down. They need teeth that keep growing so they can crunch bones. Hmm. The great thing about being a scavenger is you can eat things that other creatures can't. Nothing goes to waste when a tea devil's around. Want a bone, T-Bone? Hey, he was just with me a minute ago. Hmm, I'm not getting any signal on the tea devils. You've lost your tea devil mind, and now T-Bone is lost too. What do you mean lost? He's off the radar. Koki, come in. Koki? Oops. I'll be right there, Martin. Oh, no! What's wrong, Koki? Ten tea devils are quickly moving west together. That's unnatural. And then the tracking lights go out, and they're gone! Is tag number nine? That's T-Bone, one of the disappearing tea devils. Yeah. And number eight, his mom. Oh, no. Hover back, Zackbots. Introducing the Tea Devil Bot 2000. <laughs> ah! Now that's what I call kid proofing. <laughs> hey, it looks like we have a giant Pacific octopus coming our way. Oh, yeah, I see him too. Hey, I think it's seven. Four, five, six, seven, eight, not seven. But talk about a creature with amazing creature powers. Giant Pacifics are like a team of superheroes all rolled into one. They have escape tactics. Amazing stretching abilities. And they're super smart. But does he have the power to find my suits? I'll ask him. Hey guy, what's up? Whoa! He's thinking, I'm out of here, using jet propulsion. Hey, he must be trying to escape from a predator. I'm a big fan of jet propulsion. How does an octopus use it? Okay, water goes up into his head and then into a tube. The tube has muscles at the top of it, which quickly squeezes water out the hole in the back. And that shoots the octopus forward at about 40 kilometers per hour. It's like having a jet engine right in your head. Super cool. Chris, take over driving. I'm gonna add jet propulsion into the octopod movement system. 
If I fasten this tubing into the intake valve over here, it'll run water into the auto pump. That'll squeeze it through this tube. It just might work. If anyone can do it, you can, Aviva. <gasps> you were right, Chris. He was escaping the predator. That great white shark! Whoa! The Octo just said, eat this, and shot a cloud of ink into the great white's face to mask his escape. He didn't only take off to escape. His ink has chemicals that are poisonous, even to him. Oh, it did a super job of irritating the shark's eyes so the octopus could get away. Oh, add an ink defense to the octopod, Aviva. Oh yeah, we need an ink defense. How's that gonna help us find the suits? The octopus has it for a reason, so the octopod should too. It worked great for him because the shark is gone. I spoke too soon. <laughs> the shark must think we're an octopus. He's chewing on us. Oh, no. Ugh. He might bite through the power line. Then we're going down with no way up. No better time to test my jet propulsion feature than now. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Ink Defense is next. And I have just the thing to help me add it to the octopod. Ta-da! I brought a celery and seaweed shake in case I wanted a snack. Ah. Seaweed Ink Defense. What a great idea. Healthy, not harmful. Exactly. A basilisk. basilisk. He's so cool looking. Oh, in a dinosaur kind of way. Check out those feet. They're huge. And the claws. Whoa! Oh, look how fast he skitters. I'm gonna call him Skitter. Any lizard could be called Skitter, and this guy does way more than Skitter. For one, he walks on water. Oh, you're right, Chris. I need to come up with something that's all about being a basilisk. They munch fruit and gobble up bugs. So that means a basilisk is an omnivore, eating a lot of different things. But isn't it dangerous to hang out in the open on a branch with so many predators around? We're about to find out. Uh-oh. Eagle, two o'clock. It's a harpy eagle. A harpy? A harpy eagle has the longest talons of any bird of prey on the planet. Talons as long as a grizzly bear's claws. Aren't harpies known to pluck monkeys out of treetops? Sure are. Uh, Martin, you look kind of like a monkey holding the jobo fruit. <laughs> oh, maybe. But this giant blue monkey is too big for even a harpy to snatch. <gasps> but a basilisk lizard isn't. I didn't even name him yet. Oh, ah! Yikes. Oh. That's why a basilisk can hang out like that. Because he has a quick escape. He's walking on water. Woohoo, running up river. Whoa, check out those big claw feet splashing away. Oh, that's what I'm going to call him, Splash Claw. Cool name. He ran over two meters per second on the water. That's fast. Yeah. Wait a second. That's the same as eight kilometers per hour. Huh, humans run that fast. You're right. We can run that fast. So if we do, maybe we can cross the river too. Hmm. On your mark, get set, go! <laughs> well, that didn't work. Speed's important, but it's definitely not foot speed alone that makes the basilisk walk on water. Maybe it's the size of those wide back feet. They're way bigger than the rest of them. And it's those feet that he was water walking on. Oh, I have another water walking trick up my sleeve. Actually, in my backpack. <laughs> Snow kiss in the rainforest. <laughs> hey, you might be more organized, but I'm better prepared. On your mark, get set, go! <laughs> well, <laughs> At least we got a few more steps before we sunk. Hey, where'd the basilisk go? We can't learn the mystery of water walking without him. Ah, 
could this be Thornsley's herd? Not likely. This looks like a bachelor herd. Only guy elephants in these herds. Right, male elephants are way bigger and have giant tusks. Thornsley belongs to the other kind of herd, matriarchal. Just moms and their babies. Check out the way the elephants spray themselves with mud and sand. The sand keeps the bugs off them, and the mud keeps them cool on hot days like today. Ooh, sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> Are you cooler now? Yep, and muddier. You should try it. I think I will. <laughs> well, ah. Ooh, all right, mud cannonball, here I come. Whoa, what's going on? The elephant's trying to get some leaves to eat. Does it have to be this tree? Whoa! Whoa! Elephants have the strength of a bulldozer. Yep, if they can't reach the branches they want to eat, they just knock down the whole tree. And look how strong their trunk is. That's a huge branch he just ripped off. Hey, who needs hands when you have a trunk? Yeah, trunks can do way more things than hands can. getting late, Chris. We'll find Thornsley's herd first thing in the morning. Okay, I'll take a few branches back for Thornsley to eat. Oh, Thornsley's bed looks great, guys. Okay, so elephants only sleep four hours a night and not four hours in a row. <laughs> and they need constant physical contact when they're away from their moms. Oh, he's sucking his trunk like a baby. He is so sweet. We'll take turns keeping an eye on him while you guys get some rest. What harm can he do, Martin? Oh, well, he already fritzed out Koki's computer and squished Jimmy's sandwich. Baby elephants can be pretty playful. And that's why we love him. Good night, guys. Sleep well, Thornsley. <laughs> <sighs> what? Oh. Uh. Whoa! <gasps> Whoa! <gasps> Whoa! We found them! Red kangaroos! Yeah, the males are red, but check out the females. Female red kangaroos are blue. Be out in a second. I'm setting up the digital measuring meter so I can get the distance of their leaps. So Chris, how many roos does it take to hop over your head before you look up, huh? Whoa, got it! That last one just leaped 12 meters. That's about half a meter shy of the max jump distance of the red kangaroo, the greatest jumpers in the creature world. Incredible! I'm gonna add that leg power to your creature power suits. Cool! Jumping, over and out. Hey, you might be small, but I think that last hop was almost a meter high. 40 centimeters to be exact. I'm gonna call you Hopster. So you want to take me on, huh? <laughs> You're a tough little guy, aren't you? He's got to practice. For a kangaroo, kickboxing is as important as breathing and eating because... <gasps> Ooh, nice one, Hopster. He got you good, Martin. Hey, Hopster, where are you going? We didn't even finish round one. <laughs> Probably didn't want to hurt you. <laughs> Now here's what kickboxing is all about. One male roo saying to the other, I'm tougher than you. So for kangaroos, the best kickboxer gets to be the top roo of the mob. I wouldn't go near that boxing match. One kick from those powerful hind legs could cause a serious stomach ache. Oh, it's a good thing kangaroos have an extra thick layer of skin on their belly to absorb blows like that one. Good luck, Challenger. If you win, you'll take over as Roo Boss. Oh, and the Roo Boss wins. 
and stays head of the mob. Hey, where'd Hopster go? I want to play with him again. Yeah, he's definitely more your speed, Martin. <laughs> hey, Hopster, I'm over here. Hmm. Ah! I knew you'd like me, buddy. Hey, you want to play hopscotch? <laughs> wow, looks like he'd rather play keep away with our keys. Two can play at this game. Hey, get back here with those keys. Nice, the squirrel got it. Now he hops off, digs a hole, pushes the acorn in, covers it with dirt. Acorn hidden to eat later. Yes, that's squirrel power. So, that's not the only acorn in the forest. An oak tree can drop 23,000 acorns in the fall. And the blue jay's got one. She flies off. Finds some soft soil. Pushes the acorn into the ground. Blue jays hide acorns! Well, squirrels can remember where they hid the nuts and dig them up in the winter. Memory. And hey, blue jays are bird brains. Ah, for a blue jay, that's a compliment. Because this bird brain is smarter than a squirrel. A blue jay is so smart, she can remember where she hid her acorns through the winter and into next spring and come back to the exact spot to eat it. Oh, better memory. You couldn't do that. Hmm. Get this, any acorn a squirrel forgets to eat stays safely in the ground. Then, when the snow melts and the sun shines in the spring, those acorns grow into oak trees. That's how the gray squirrel plants the trees that feed it. Well, any acorn a blue jay chooses not to eat stays safely in the ground. Then when the snow melts and the sun shines in the spring, those uneaten acorns grow into oak trees. That's how the blue jay plants oak forests. <gasps> blue jay's better. Gray squirrel's greater. Blue jay. Gray squirrel. Blue. Gray. Blue. Gray. Hmm. Ah! <laughs> Check this out. A gray squirrel digs a fake hole to fool acorn predators, like deer and wild turkey. Turkeys eat acorns too? Yeah, look. The turkey is tricked. The squirrel buries the acorn safely over there. Ha, now that's clever. And we can bury 300 acorns in a single day. Please. <laughs> Just one acorn at a time? Us Blue Jays, we can stuff one acorn into our expandable throat pouch. Then two, three, four in our throat pouch and an extra one in our mouth. Then fly off with all five acorns at once. All the way over here. We Blue Jays can carry more acorns at a time and carry them further, up to eight kilometers away, and plant them. So Blur, ready to have some fun? She has you in her sights, Chris. How's this looking for gazelle behavior? Blur likes what she's seeing. A cheetah looks for a gazelle who isn't paying attention. So I'll just focus on looking for some nice gazelle grass. Too green, that. Too dry, too spiky. The cheetah stalks as closely as she can. A cheetah can run super fast, but only for a short time. The gazelle can't run as fast, but can run for longer. So before she makes her move, a cheetah tries to get close. She's getting pretty close. She's getting really close. Pan drop seed grass, nutritious, high in fiber. Chris! <laughs> Cheetah runs with long strides. At top speed, each stride covers eight meters, the length of a small school bus. It's the backbone. Look at that, it's bending. When it bends down, it stretches the legs out further so each stride is longer, so the cheetah covers more ground with each step. Uh-oh, 
She's catching up. Too fast. Must engage evasive maneuvers. The gazigzag. He's going with the gazigzag. The gazigzag? Yeah, the gazelle zigzag. The gazigzag. Trying to throw the cheetah off. But the cheetah can gazigzag too. He's staying on Chris's tail. Speaking of tails, look at the cheetahs. It's whipping right, left, up, down, right, left. Keeping the cheetah on balance. Oh, she's catching up. I can't shake her. Ah, whoa! The bendable backbone feature is exactly what I need. <sighs> oh, oh, don't look at me like that. Ah! How about that tail balancer? Can you put in one of those? Aviva, you'll need one for turning through the rough terrain. Ah! Here. Chris, will you quit playing around? I'm not playing. The cheetah's playing with me. Oh. Hey, but I did discover something interesting on this last takedown. Except for that sharp dew claw for hooking and tripping, a cheetah has nails like a dog. Oh, yeah. Almost every cat, lions, house cats, leopards, have retractable claws. These claws stay in the paw when the cat is walking or running to protect their sharpness and only come out when the cat grabs something. Oh, yeah, look at that. In and out. But in the cheetah, the claws are always out because the cheetah is a runner and runners need traction. The claws dig into the dirt so the cheetahs can push off to top speed. I'm on it. We'll add traction claws to every foot. Whoa! Even as babies, they're strong. It's so wild that a baby orangutan is strong enough to grab and hang when he is just six hours old. When he's around a year old, he's as strong as a grown-up human. <laughs> Aw, his arms must be sore from all that swinging. Yeah, orangutans spend 90% of their time climbing and swinging. And with all that climbing, even orangutans get sore muscles. Bros, come in. We're here. We just discovered that orangutans get sore muscles from swinging and climbing, just like we do. Yeah, baby orangutan learns that when he's really young. Okay, we get it, we get it. We're sore and stiff and can't do anything. I can't even work on orangutan powers. Oh, please hurry back with some medicine. Don't worry, we're on our way. Yeah, but if we stay... We're gonna have to work together to get by that huge orangutan. Huge O. Huge O? Huge O. Huge orangutan. Huge O. Huge O. Ha, sounds good. Initiate operation slip past huge O. Cover me, dude. Got your back, bro. Clear! 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 Unclear! Whoa! Oh no! Bro! Chris! Where'd you go? Oh, hi, Hujo. Uh, those cheek flaps of yours are very impressive, huh? Whoa! Whoa! Wait, let me guess. We're back with the orangutan mom and baby. How'd you know? Because Hujo keeps heaving us back here for a reason. <laughs> no way, it's just a coincidence. <gasps> Why is she eating leaves that are so gross? Chewing, not eating. She's not swallowing those leaves, just mashing them up into a frothy green paste. It's like a green bubbly lotion. I don't believe it. She chewed up those leaves into a paste, a lotion that took the ouch away. The orangutan made medicine. The orangutans are primates like us. 
98% of our DNA is identical. So if that medicine works on an orangutan, it'll probably work on a Viva Koki and Jimmy Z. Let's go! <gasps> hey, where's she going? She has chicks. Oh, they're kind of cute in a really weird way. They look hungry. Oh, bird moms always bring food back for their chicks. Yeah, the thrush brings worms, blue jays bring caterpillars, and peregrine falcons bring other birds. So what do pigeons bring? Cupcakes? French fries? Pizza crust? Wait a sec. Huh? Her beak's empty. What's going on? Huh? Am I losing my mind, or is the mother pigeon spitting up milk for her baby? A bird giving milk? But, but, only mammals give milk. Kangaroos feed their young milk, horses feed milk, bears feed milk, but not birds. Except for the pigeon. A milk-like liquid is definitely flowing out of the walls of her throat directly into the chick's beak. Pigeon milk. Pigeons are one of the few birds in the world that feed their young milk. Weird, but way cool. We've really got to rethink our thoughts on pigeons. Yeah, even the most ordinary animals do extraordinary things. Uh, Chris, do you realize you're leaning on your activation button while the pigeon pecks your nose? Uh-oh. Chris! Chris! <laughs> Uh, Chris, you're eating an old french fry. Pew! Okay, brother of mine. Now you've got pigeon powers. <laughs> Whatever that is. Oh, and by the way, I'm not thirsty for pigeon milk right now or ever. <laughs> Martin, I'm feeling really weird. Birds of a feather flock together. Peregrine Falcon! She's hunting. Pigeons! Here she comes. She's going into that dive called a stoop. Fly, bro, fly! Ah! Ah! We found the falcon, but the falcon found Chris in his pigeon suit! On our way! Ah! Ah! But one good thing, what I thought was pigeon fat is really pigeon muscle. These pigeons have powerful chest muscles pumping their wings. Speedometer reads 60 kilometers per hour. Fast for level flight, but the Falcon's faster. 380 kilometers per hour. Oh, wings tucked in, hyper streamlined. She's letting gravity pull her to earth, cutting through the air like an arrow. The fastest animal in the world. This is amazing. This is incredible. This is scary. Look out, Chris. She's getting a talon ready. She's going to talon strike you out of the sky. <laughs> Thanks for the play-by-play. -play. <laughs> Roll right. Whoa. Whoa, that was close. Uh oh. She's still after you, Chris. Hey, maybe there is some power in this pigeon suit after all. Woohoo! In level flight, the pigeon flies fast. Bro, we just started our survival trek. Maybe you shouldn't be drinking so much water. I only had three sips. <laughs> I think it was more like five sips. Maybe four. But you're right. We might be prepared for our trek, but we're up against one of the biggest, baddest deserts of the planet, the Australian Outback. Only five centimeters of rainfall a year. Daytime temperature, 39 degrees Celsius. And the best way to handle it is by following the desert creatures for leads. Like the thorny devil. He looks like a prehistoric mini dinosaur. But I've seen better dancers. He sure is a spiny little guy. I'm gonna name him Spinester. Hi. Hey, oh, don't get too close, Chris. He's drinking. What do you mean? There isn't any water, no puddle, no stream. Remember, the most amazing part of the thorny devil is how they drink. Those water-attracting grooves on their skin that lead to the corners of their mouth. That's right. 
They can actually drink water from dew that falls on their backs. Oh, I can always spare some drops of water for my thirsty lizard friend. The grooves collect the water, and then as the thorny devil drinks, the water is pulled through the grooves right up to the corner of his mouth. It's like he's got straws all over his body, so he can suck the water right into his mouth. Oh, if I had that, I'd pour lemonade on my back all day. <laughs> Whoa, boy. From the sun's location, we have about three hours before it gets dark. So we gotta keep heading east, the opposite direction that the sun sets. And learn more about survival in the great Australian outback. We'll try to make you proud, Spinester. See ya! Probasca's monkeys have the biggest nose of any monkey. It doesn't seem real, but it is. Wish I had a nose like that. It's cool. That's what I'll call ya. Schnozzle, after that cool nose. The question is, what is that nose all about? Why in the world would a monkey need a nose like that? <laughs> One thing's for sure, that nose doesn't slow you down. Follow that monkey's nose. Woohoo! You proboscis monkeys are good in the trees. Looks like there are eight monkeys in this troop, and Schnozzle is the only adult male. Everybody else is a female or kid monkey. <laughs> like this nosy young guy. Hey, wait up, nosy! Not so fast, Schnozzle! Woohoo! Ha ha! <laughs> Did you catch that move, Schnozzle? That oh. hurts! Oh. 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 Martin? Chris? This is pretty funny, do you, Schnozzle? <laughs> I think it's a pretty good look for you guys. <laughs> and thanks for figuring out that the mystery discs are the proboscis monkey. Oh, hello. We're just wondering what these noses are for. Uh, hi there. <laughs> hi. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Suddenly we're pretty popular around here. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Guys, I think you figured out one thing those noses are for. We did? Yeah, the girl monkeys like them. <gasps> You're right. In nature, lots of animals have certain features that show off they're healthy and strong. Like male moose and deer. They have big antlers to show females that they're survivors. For proboscis monkeys, it's all about the nose. The bigger and droopier the nose, the better. I think I know someone who's not happy to have two more monkeys in this troop. We'd better deactivate. Uh-oh! The mud jammed them up! Uh, we better back off. Sorry, gotta leave! This looks good. Okay, you grab a nap, Spot Swat, and I'll scan the area. This cheetah eyesight is amazing. I can see so far. Cheetahs have one of the best long distance eyesights of any mammal. Warthog at 200 meters. Giraffe at 400 meters. Rhino, two kilometers. Elephants at three kilometers. <gasps> oh, this little spot's what having a nightmare. It's okay, little. Ah, honey badger! Ah, ah, oh. 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 A honey badger looks like a cheetah cub. Or a cheetah cub looks like a honey badger. Just never do that again, okay? Like never again? 
Never ever again. <laughs> this genus suit's out of control! Oh! I've heard of charging rhinos, but never anybody charging a rhino. Whoa! Spot Swat, there you are! Oh, I'm just gonna have to remember who's who. You look almost exactly the same. Like, your mimics. <laughs> as long as your heads are down and you're not snarling. Oh, come on, not again. I'm not running this time. I'm not running. No way. Huh? <gasps> a black mamba. And now I know why it's called that. Because it's got a black tongue. The black mamba is the only venomous snake in the world that can rise up high enough to sink its fangs into your face. Did I just say what I think I said? Uh, did I ever say protecting a cheetah cub was easy? Yeah! Whoa! Oh. Tortuga, come in, Tortuga. We've got a battle here between a black mamba and a honey badger. He was famous for eating all kinds of venomous snakes. He eats cobras, but the black mamba is the most aggressive snake in Africa. And it's a big one. <coughs> Went down the wrong pipe, huh? Uh, care, uncle. <coughs> it's her. Oh, well, that's a nice surprise. <laughs> Half the secret to finding animals is just being outside. All right, this is our chance now. No sudden movements, no loud sounds, no surprises. Whoa, look at her huge hind legs. That's where the caracal's extreme jumping power comes from. Whoa! Told you caracals were the hissiest of all the cats. You did? No, you didn't. I meant to. Anyway, you're right. She's even out hissing the crocodile. She's got one tough attitude. Make that one tough catitude. And what a jump! We gotta see that again. Check out those lightning fast reflexes. And her powerful leg muscle shooter straight up into the air. Just out of reach of the croc's jaws. Only the caracal can. Oh no. We lost her again. <laughs> We've kept up with cheetahs and lions. And leopards. But we can't catch up to a caracal? Hmm. So why don't we let the caracal catch us? Huh? Oh, a bird lure. We can activate our suits with guinea fowl powers and let the caracal catch us. Uh, no. Did you see those claws? <laughs> I'll activate the creature power suits anytime I can. But as a birdie? In caracal country? No way! I was thinking more of a birdmobile. Hmm, a birdmobile. Nice. Aviva, come in. Changing plans. We know a surefire way to find your birdie and get it back. I'll try anything. How about a miniaturized birdmobile and a guinea fowl disguise? A guinea fowl flapper! I'm on it. Get back here as fast as you can. It'll be ready. Okay, here's a creature quiz for you. One guinea fowl. Really nervous. Times four equals one hunting caracal. Yes. Can he fell in one leap? That cat has some quick paws too. Ooh, a cheetah wants in on the action. Hey, that's cheating. Cheetahs rarely steal food, but competition is fierce out here between the wild cats. This isn't cheating. It's cheetah-ing. Wait. Oh no, we lost her again. <laughs> Nothing like repelling down from the sky onto the African savanna. This is working great. We came down right in the middle of a herd of zebras. <laughs> Almost too great. We could have landed right on top of a zebra. <laughs> <laughs> shh, shh. Careful, Martin. If they hear or see anything unusual, we might scare them off. Lucky for us, Viva's cloud camouflage worked like a charm. I'm going in. You with me? Oh, right behind you, bro. Whoa. Now that is one amazing maze of stripes. 
Huh? Whoa! <laughs> I'm already getting dizzy from all these stripes! Me too! But I can still see that zebras are actually black with white stripes. You mean white with black stripes. No, black with white stripes. Check out their black noses and lips. Their skin is black and the white hairs grow out of that. Yeah, you're right. Hey, I bet this herd is migrating. Zebras have to keep moving to find lush green grass. Looks like they're headed across the river. <gasps> Jimmy's coming down for a landing. Oh, easy does it, Jay-Z. Nice and quiet so you don't... Scare the zebra herd. Run! I think the herd thought they were being attacked by a giant turtle. Whoa! All the zebra stripes are blending together. Oh, if you were a predator, how could you single one out? That's one of the reasons zebras have stripes. To keep predators, like lions, guessing. Confusion camouflage. And it works. You can't tell where one zebra ends and the other begins. Stripes. Lots of stripes. Whew, that zebra herd sure got out of here in a hurry. Hold it. Is somebody crying? Oh, it's a little zebra foal. He got left behind in all the confusion. I bet he got scared from the sound of the loud landing. <coughs> Poor little guy has lost his migrating mom and the herd. Sorry, I never landed the tortuga surrounded by sky camouflage before. It's okay, Jimmy. We just need to get him back to his mom. Don't go yet. The little guy's stripe pattern is perfect for our new Wildcrack crew jackets. <laughs> Looks more like a fun maze to me. Hey, I'm gonna call him Maze. Uh, no time for jackets and mazes. We gotta move fast. We don't want his herd to get ahead of us. I'll just snap a few photos of Maze's pattern to work from. I want the fabric to look exactly like zebra stripes. <laughs> Thanks, Maze. I can cut Martin out of the photos easily. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Whoa, where'd that go? Martin? Martin, I'm still here. Where'd you go? I'm over here, the flashing light. Oh, okay, I can see you. Coming over. Wait, <laughs> you're not Chris. You're an angler fish. Wow. Oh, those teeth are awesome. Some of those fangs are so big, <laughs> they don't even fit in your mouth. Wow, clever fish. Most of your teeth are tilted inwards, so it's easy for your prey to swim in, but not out. <laughs> Pretty cool. Careful, bro. She's a dangerous predator, so watch out. Whoa. Martin, Martin, watch out! Watch out! Whoa! Whoa, you can't catch this. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> Oh, wow, look at this. The light is actually millions of glowing bacteria trapped inside this little sack. She uses it to lure her prey close so she can catch it. <laughs> like it tried with me, but nah, I'm way too good of a swimmer. Swimming's my thing. Martin? Can't catch this. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Where are you going? Whoa! Oh, dude! I think it wants to meet you! More like eat you! Whoa! Uh -oh. faster, faster, Chris! Chris. Yeah, faster! Oh, a deep sea shrimp! Perfect! Whoa! Ugh. <laughs> Glue! What? Glue! That deep sea shrimp has the best defense mechanism ever. When it feels threatened, it shoots out a glowing glue that confuses its predator. While the predator attacks the glue, the shrimp slips away. Well, I'm covered in glue. Oh, I'm like a glow-in-the-dark target. Yeah, we better get you cleaned up before you get gulped down. Oh. Okay, Blur, check this out. I'm injured. Oh, oh, my leg. 
I can't run fast anymore. I hope a predator doesn't see me. Yes, my trick is working. Predators usually target injured or weak prey. They're the easiest to catch. Ow, I'm so injured. Huh? Uh-oh, it worked, but on a different predator. A python's got a hug on me. Pythons are constricting snakes. That means they squeeze their prey until they can't breathe anymore. This wasn't exactly the plan, but I'll take it. Could you please press that button for me? It's the one. Woo! Yes, I'm a python. Wait a second. No animal eats adult pythons. I'm at the top of the food web. Woohoo! Not so fast, Chris. We're checking something. What? Yep, it's right here. It almost never happens, but big adult pythons are sometimes caught and eaten by a super hungry lion or leopard. You mean kind of like that? Whoa, you gotta be pretty hungry to tangle with a python. Whoa, not this time. Catching food can be dangerous business for predators, too. Prey defends itself, and getting a meal isn't always easy. So it's official. It's rare, but leopards and lions will tangle with an adult python if they're desperate. Wow, I better slither off and follow that lion. Gotta slide. See ya, Blur. Okay, I know a lion would eat a battered fox, and you probably have to be on the lookout for spotted hyenas, too. Hey, if I could just find one of those. <laughs> I know you probably don't want to find out, but I have to finish my food chain. Ah! Huh? <gasps> Marshall Eagle! <laughs> Whoo, nice move! The old roll on your back, kick and bite defense? Ha, a battered fox classic. Hey, it's not easy being an animal when things are constantly out to get you. Huh? No! No! See what I mean? A pipe! Hey, Martin. Gotcha. What? Chris? <laughs> you're a python? Yeah, and you're lucky I'm not hungry. Because we eat bat-eared foxes. Yeah, whoo! It's rough out here. I know. Animals always have to be on the lookout for another creature trying to catch them. Imagine if humans had to live like that every day. Hey, we're almost there. One more creature to find. See you at the top. I'll be waiting for you. Well, we know this Bigfoot creature can climb. What can't it do? There it is. Oh, he's fast. I just made out a giant shadowy furball. I thought I saw his tail. It looked like it was striped. Come on. I should call Chris and Koki. Tell them it's a climber and seems to have a striped tail. I think it's coming from inside the Cretera. <gasps> Clue number five? The eight-eyed creature can drive? Huh? <laughs> Guy! No! We found the big-footed creature. It climbs, has a striped tail, and we're sneaking up on it right now. We got something here, too! The eight-eyed creature's inside the Cretera! Our creature's a... a... It's a... a... Raccoons! A, a giant, giant raccoon! raccoon. Actually, three baby raccoons, each with two eyes. And there's Jimmy's controller. But it's an eight-eyed creature. Where are the other two eyes? I bet the giant raccoon is their mother. She must be. But she's huge. How'd she get so big? The raccoon must have fiddled with the miniaturizer controls. That's possible. With their finger-like hands, raccoons are masters at holding and grabbing. They can even open all sorts of latches and locks. We gotta check out our clue list. Wow, the eight eyes and the giant feet really threw us. If it weren't for those things, we probably would have guessed it. Yeah, so let's see. Omnivore. Raccoons definitely eat both animals like crayfish and plants like berries. Great climbers. That explains all the scratching noise we heard. Don't forget about the grabby hands. Raccoons can catch food by feeling for it. Smarts. That along with the grabby hands and these guys can figure out how to get into anything and that classic striped tail. By the way, love the mask, too. What's that for? It helps them with their night vision and prevents glare. Well, you really had us stumped, Mama Raccoon. 
Hey, speaking of Mama Raccoon, how are we going to get her back to the Tortuga so we can make her normal size and reunite her with her kids? Well, one thing we know about raccoons is they're excellent mothers. Oh, yeah. So we know she'll definitely come back for them. But when? And we need a way to get her into the miniaturizer. Well, she may just need a little bait. Wait a sec. Why don't I like the sound of that? Whoa! Chris, what are you doing? Oh, today's the day. We're getting that honeybee footage we always wanted. Oh, he won the coin toss, so he gets to do the filming while I stand guard and make sure nothing goes wrong. Well, I always like to see my miniaturizer put to good use. Oh, this will be good, all right. The ultimate super close-up of exactly what a bee does inside these flowers. <laughs> What's it like in there, Chris? Oh, it's amazing. Like a forest of stamens. Stamens? What are those? They're these long stalks with the yellowish-orange stuff on top. That yellowish-orangey stuff is... Oh! oh. <laughs> Pollen! <laughs> wow! They're sticky! They have to be to... Chris! Incoming! Ah, all set! He's a honeybee! Kinda cute little guy. You call that cute? Oh, you may not be cute, but you are beautiful. A beautiful beast. <gasps> beast? Beast! Ha <laughs> ha, let's call her Beast! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Who needs seatbelts when you got a sticky pollen seat to sit on? Are you getting that nectar drinking, Chris? Huh? Oh, yeah. Drink it up, Beast. Wow. That pollen is sticking all over her furry face. I know how you feel, Beast. Pollen sticks to everything. Whoa! <laughs> Chris, you're like a giant pollen grain. Ha! <laughs> cool. But I'll just hop off in case you... <laughs> I'm stuck! Stuck? Hold still, Beast. I'm just gonna give my brother a hand. Well, a couple fingers anyway. Uh oh. I had a feeling you were ready for takeoff! What? This mission is going berserk! Follow that bee! Do you hear footsteps? <laughs> okay, Toke. We're gonna have to remember that the surface the gecko walks on is totally 3D. They can walk anywhere. On any surface. But how do they do it? The answer is right there in her feet. Do you think she'll let us have a look? Well, the Toke is one of the toughest geckos, but I think I can keep her entertained. Oh. Okay, Toke, cooler than your average reptile friend of mine. You want to hear a joke? Okay, what do you call a lizard who sings? A reptile! <laughs> huh? What? Wait, that was a joke. What? Frogs sing, toads sing, but lizards don't sing. Except the gecko. Oh, the gecko is the only kind of lizard in the world that makes musical sounds. <laughs> okay, Toke. 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 This is astonishing. A gecko has toe pads with tiny microscopic features called CT, like hairs, in clumps. It's like there are hundreds of tiny toothbrushes on each toe pad, and they have an electric charge. Chris, can you grab me a plate of glass? Sure. Toke. 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 <gasps> when the toe pad touches a surface, these millions of tiny electric charges attract to the tiny electric charges in the surface, an attraction strong enough to keep the gecko on the surface. And the power in a single toe pad is phenomenal. The power charge meter is pegged to 11. Hey. But if they're so powerful, how does the gecko ever lift his feet? 
Wait a second. There's something very different about gecko feet. Our fingers bend this way, but the geckos bend the other way. When the gecko bends her toe that way, the toe pad begins to peel off and the electric charges are turned off. Charge on, charge off. Charge on, charge off. And that's how a gecko can lift her feet so she can run upside down on a surface. That's it. We've figured out the secret of the, the gecko, gecko effect. Keep her busy, Martin, and I'll get this power programmed for the creature power suits. Okay with me if it's okay with okay to okay. Oh, it's amazing all the things you learn when you take the time to talk to a gecko. What? A gecko washes its own eyeball with her tongue? Oh, now that's way cooler than blinking. Way bleh. <laughs> Wait, I wish I could do that. Have you ever had something in your eye and couldn't get it out? If you had this gecko power, you could lick it out. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> A moose is on the loose! So let me get this straight. So the wolf pack was starting to surround you. Hey! Was he with the pack then? No, at four weeks, he's too young to go on the hunt. Well, he's attacking my controller! Come on, Jimmy, his teeth are just coming in. He's gotta try him out on something. Well, all the adult wolf teeth were already in. I didn't want any of the big dogs trying those out on my moose behind. So, I knew before they closed the circle around me, I had to do something. Chris, deactivate! Get out of that moose suit! Well, hooks don't work that way! Well, then work them the way they work! Run! Sometimes these creature power suits are too creaturey. But remember, a moose can't outrun a pack of wolves for long. You'll have to think of something else soon. <sighs> can't run anymore. Think of something else. <gasps> Antlers. Could they be the weapon against wolves? Antlers work on one wolf. Uh, uh-oh. But not on a pack, because moose only have antlers on one end, and wolves can surround a moose and attack from all ends. Yeah. Ooh, but a moose can swim. Yeah. Chris, are you okay? What are you doing? The Moosey Paddle. The Moosey Paddle? <laughs> Good one, bro, the Moosey Paddle. Oh, come on, guys, give me a little rest. Chris, while you cool off, I'll track the pack. Wait up! Oh, no, moose hooves. How am I gonna deactivate with moose hooves? Oh, bro, here comes trouble. Make that three troubles. Don't move. How about I just do this? Quilber, come back. Look at that confidence. He's stomping his feet and rattling his tail to tell them he's coming through, whether they're there or not. Yeah, he's saying, don't mess with me or you might get hurt. Those quills aren't only defense, but they talk too. Whoa, when you have a defense like that, creatures listen. Ooh, that young lion better be careful. A porcupine can't shoot his quills, but those quills are so loosely attached 
that just a touch is all it takes to get a pawful or face full of quills. Amazing! It's a spiny backwards charge. Now that's an impressive move. The best defense is a good offense. Ooh, ouch! Oh, now that's the quill defense in action. Amazing hair that can keep lions at bay. Ooh, and that young lion is lucky he just got a pawful because a quill in the wrong part of the chest or face can even kill a lion. There goes a great defender. Wait, he can't go. We need more quills, and we've got to keep up with him if we're going to get more at the den. I've got a rope and an idea. <laughs> Uh, we're with him. Nice day for a stroll. There he goes! Follow that bat! While the kids are snoozing, the bats are cruising. <laughs> oh, yeah! Woo! I love bat power! Good one! Hey, did you notice something about bite size, Martin? He's not catching mosquitoes anymore. Hey. He must be full, because if insects are abundant, a little brown bat can fill his belly in the first two hours after the sun goes down. Right yard, bro. A brown bat can eat as many as 3,000 mosquitoes each night, and almost all of that happens right after the sun goes down. Speaking of going down, Bite Size is heading straight for that pond. He's drinking on the fly. Gotta, Gotta try, try it. it. Uh, not that thirsty. <laughs> uh, it's more like this, bro. Little sips. Like that. <gasps> Whoa! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> uh, you were saying, bro? Whew! Bite Size is a perfect name. It's a dangerous world out here for little brown bats. Hmm. Maybe we should watch our backs with a little echolocation look around. Good idea, I'll give it a try. Something's bouncing back. <gasps> Rhododendron bush, down low. Awesome! My turn. <clears throat> ah. yeah. Oops, sorry, dude. Let me try that this way. Oh. It's working. There's a tree trunk and a branch and... <gasps> An owl! A screech owl! Fly, 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 fly! Ah! Ooh. Follow bite size! Another close one. Tell me about it. Oh, here it is. Oh, the cleaning station. That's it? That's the cleaning station? There's nothing there. And what's the little Remora doodle sticky head doing? Oh, he's just waiting for a ride. A Remora swims around like that until he finds a new shark to hitch on to. Incoming shark. Oh, and she's a big one. Looks about five and a half meters. That's the largest predatory fish in the ocean, right there. But what is she there for? What gets cleaned at these cleaning station doohickeys anyway? She does. Yeah, check it out. And he's the guy that does the cleaning. Well, him and his buddies. Cleaner fish! Oh, and she's pulling into the station. The body position. It's telling the cleaner as, please clean me. I may be a shark, but I won't bite, promise. And the fish version of a dentist says, no problem, that's what I do. They're picking parasites from the shark's teeth and mouth. For them, it's food, so it's a good deal. 
Sharks, rays, and all kinds of fish line up at these cleaning stations. Suckerhead's making his move. He's on! We better get in there. Okay, here we go. Hey, Sharky. Sharky? Uh, how about razor mouth? Look at those teeth. Yeah, well, whatever. Sharky, razor mouth, just go easy on us, big girl. Just want to find out more about you. Whoa, you can see new rows of teeth coming in behind the old ones. Oh, yeah, those teeth never stop coming. We only have two sets of teeth and that's it. Sharks, just keep growing them. Ah, and look, sharks get loose teeth too. What? Got it. Wow. They're serrated with those super sharp ridges on the edges, just like a saw. Those teeth are serious slicers and dicers. Chris, look out! We're drifting! Oh no, a current. It's pulling us off course! Yeah, and on course to be her main course! I hope she's not hungry. If she is, we're about to be shark bait. Whoa! Please don't close your mouth. Please don't close your mouth. Uh, woo! Close one. Time to meet this mission head on. Engaging head sucker place. Steady, steady. We're about to make contact. Three, two, one. Yes, we've landed. The first successful mission onto a great white shark in the history of creature adventuring. Yay, we did it! Mission control to Remora Sub. Well done, guys. Woohoo! Oh, yeah, we're, we're stuck, stuck on, on sharks! sharks. No! There's gotta be another bird of paradise around here somewhere. <sighs> that didn't take long. Listen. It's the superb bird of paradise. He's calling out to the female to let her know he's about to do his courting dance. Oh, the superb might not be the most colorful bird of paradise, but this guy has talent. He can sing and dance. Oh, and he's about to put on a show for the female to prove he's healthy and strong. The show's about to start. I'm sure he can teach us a few cool dance moves. Whoa, look what he can do with his feathers. He's dancing circles around her. Wow, with a huge blue happy face. That's impressive. I'm gonna name him Smiley because of his big blue smile. Oh, there goes the female. Guess she thought Smiley needed more practice. I gotta try some of those moves. What? Oh, nice trip. See you next fall. Oh, that's harder than it looks. <laughs> hey, Aviva, did you see Smiley dance? Sure did, but I still don't think I can dance like that. I'll stick to the stuff I know I'm good at, like making a bird of paradise disc for your creature power suits. I collected these beautiful feathers outside the Tortuga. Cool. Over and out. Hmm. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Hey, Aviva. Hmm? You okay? Fine, Koki. <laughs> Just bumped into something. <laughs> Oh, my feet bumped into each other. Dancing just isn't my thing. <sighs> Good luck, Chris. Okay, googly eye, I'm ready to learn tree leaping from the master. Uh, whoa, the spring in your legs is unbelievable. It's the long legs, isn't it? They're longer than your body. Okay, let's do this, googly eye. So you use those frog-like legs to leap off the branch like this. Yeah. I did it. I love this vertical clinging and leaping. I'm ready for more. Farther. Yeah. Farther. Yeah. Farther. Yeah. Uh oh. Well, human legs definitely can't leap as far as a Tarzir leg. Uh oh. Gotta break his fall. Chris, fine, coming at you. Yes! Oh, thanks, bro. That was gonna... Oh. Hurt. Oh. I'm good with the leaping for now. What's the next Tarzir tradition? Well, it looks like they're getting ready for something really important. Everyone is leaving Home Tree. Even Googly Jr. 
We're right behind you, googly eye. Wow, she really does look like a dinosaur. Yeah, and some dinosaurs had feathers, too. Yeah, when you're looking at a raptor, you are looking at the direct descendants of hunting dinosaurs. Hmm. He found something. Yeah, trouble. And its name is Black Mamba. That's the kind of snack surprise you don't want to find in your lunch bag. Unless, of course, you're a hunter bird. The mamba can't get a bite on his skinny legs. Plus, they're covered with hard scales that protect them from the fangs. And there are talons on the feet. And the hunter bird uses those talons to stomp snakes. Yeah, stomp. <laughs> That's stomp specialty. Stomp is an incredible snake predator. Whoa! Oh, that was totally prehistoric. Raptors rock! Okay, I'm in on this raptor roundup. Me too. Even though they're like living dinosaurs, they're too cool to be afraid of. And they must have all sorts of amazing creature powers. Great, that's one raptor found and only 320 to go. Oh, uh, that's how many species of raptor there are in the world. 320. Well, check this out. Our hunter bird has led us right to a few more. A chanting goshawk. Peregrine falcon. A spotted eagle owl. A whitehead vulture. And a martial eagle. Let's confirm they're all raptors. Curved sharp bills? Check. Check. Eyes on front of head for hunting? Check. Check. Talons? Check. Check. Well, <laughs> when the raptors round themselves up for a drink at a water hole, a raptor roundup is a breeze. I like the owl the best. The eagle can eat me. Falcons are my fave. What the heck? Huh? Hmm. It's Gourmand. <laughs> what a move. Go, Stomp, go. Get out of here. Yoo-hoo! Gotcha! Oh, but he got the rest! <laughs> oh! Were you wondering which raptor to have for dinner? When I've tasted them all, I'll let you know. <laughs> Uh-oh. Gourmand! What's he up to now? Don't know for sure, but I bet it involves barbecuing our raptors. Guys, get the tortuga ready for takeoff. Come on, Chris. We'll track Gourmand. Nobody is gonna mess with the pride, with he who breathes fire as the guardian. He must be 180 kilograms and as big as a lion gets. Yeah, Ane Pumuamoto looks to be five years old and in his prime. And that's his job to guard the lionesses anywhere from two to 20, plus his cubs, from danger. Of the 36 species of wildcat, lions are the only ones that live in a big social group, a big old family. Uh. Then where's he going? Mm -hmm. <gasps> All right, yeah! Woohoo! He's going on patrol! Every few nights or so, he'll patrol the pride's territory to make sure there is no intruder, like other lions around. He doesn't wait for trouble to come. He goes out to stop it. Yeah, but what if trouble finds the pride while he's gone? Well, the lioness are tough, but if trouble shows up that they really need help with, like a really big clan of hyenas or other male lions, the lioness will call for the lion and he'll come charging back. Saving the pride with the lion powers. Uh, where's he going? Are you kidding? When a lion of a pride trots off to survey the territory, what do you think we do? Have a catnap in the Cretera? No way! We're going on lion patrol. Naturally. Take your time. <laughs> He's marking his territory. Weird how a lion pees backwards. Male dogs lift legs, male cats spray backwards. Hey, while we track him, let's map his territory. 
Yes, because this termite mound is like a signpost on the edge of his territory, and his pee is like a message to other lines that says, Keep out! Trespassers will be attacked and maimed and in other ways have a very bad day. Uh, something like that. Engaging Map Actuator. While we track him, let's charge his territory, and we'll end up with a map of a Nepomuamoto kingdom. <sighs> Looks like he's on the prowl. Let's move! Do something a little different today? Sure. This time, why don't we name all the lion cubs? Yeah, why not? And we'll surprise Martin when he gets back. I'll name him Lil Cubby. <laughs> <laughs> and that one's El Cutissimo. Wow, he really is the king of beasts. Wow, we've traveled so far so fast. Yeah, a lion on patrol can cover 64 kilometers in a single night. In just an hour, we're already eight kilometers away on the far reaches of the Pride's territory. Okay, now go easy, easy. Oh, we're just an ordinary hippo. Don't worry, Martin. I built this hippo sub pretty tough. It's basically indestructible. What? Even for a 4,500 kilogram creature with one meter razor sharp tusks? Hmm, maybe. So let's just find the disc quickly then. Okay, we gotta ease right into the herd. It's mostly females and their calves. But then there's the bull. He's the most aggressive of all making sure everyone knows that this is his stretch of river. Well, you just tell him that his stretch of river has my disc. You can tell him that. I'm just gonna make sure he's not around. Chris, come in. Any sign of Tusker? Yeah, you're clear. He's right here on the beach. He's busy making sure that even the crocodiles know that he rules this part of the river. But hurry, he can't stay out of the water long. He'll overheat. They need that river to keep cool during the day. Okay, Aviva, let's make our move before Tusker gets back. Hip Hippo, hooray! We're going in! <laughs> they just hip hop along the bottom of the river like astronauts walking on the moon. Aw, that's why I love hippos. That little guy is so cute. I'll name him Hipster Apotamus. First name Hipster, last name Apotamus. <laughs> Look at him go! Hippity hop, hippity hop. Oh, hi, little Hipster. <gasps> hipster, look out! Crocodile! I thought hippos ruled the river. Yeah, but crocs will grab a calf if they get a chance. Mama Apotamus to the rescue! Whew. That was close. Where's Hipster? There! What's he doing? The disc! Hipster found the disc! Oh, yeah! Let's go! <gasps> oh, no! He's heading back! Mayday! 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 Whoa! Yuck! What's with this slimy rock? Hey, you're not a rock. You're a hippo. So that means this is not slime. It's natural hippo sunscreen. <laughs> Thanks, bud. I wish our skin made a natural sunscreen like yours does. Whoa! Ugh. Gotta go. Gotta keep my eye on Tusker. If he finds that hippo sub in this river, there could be trouble. <gasps> and there's the trouble. Martin, Aviva, come in! That's it. Try to get past that big beastie varmint. Oh, and we may just be too busy to help if they get in a jam. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <sighs> 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 
We should really remember to finish cross country and lining before the sun rises. Yeah, look, all the smart creatures are heading to the shade. Just consider it another thing you learned from the animals. Yeah, and there is one good thing about getting overheated in Africa. It gives you a good reason to cool off in... <laughs> a mud wallow! What are we waiting for? Last one in is a waddled bellbird. <gasps> huh? Uh, I guess we'll have to find another mud wallow. Are you kidding? This wallow's where it's at. Look. <laughs> a rarely seen wildlife moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not going anywhere. They both want to go into the mud to cool off. But there's only room enough for one. Whoever's the most powerful wins. Who do you think is more powerful, a rhino or an elephant? That's like asking me who has a fuzzier cottontail, a bunny or a rattlesnake. Of course the elephant's more powerful. No way! The rhino wins this face off horns down. An elephant weighs more, two tons more. A rhino can run with a charge of 50 kilometers per hour. An elephant can't even run, only walk fast. Oh! Oh! Yeah, but he's got a fast walk with a lot of weight behind it. Plus, an elephant is so strong, he even has 100,000 muscles in his trunk. Oh! 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 their mud. That'll really mess them up. <laughs> the big gray things will get all dried up and Chris and Martin will have no fun. I bet I sure ruin their day. <gasps> Jackpot, stop! No, not you. The plane. Stop the plane. I've got to see this. Spy cloud. Whoa. What was that? A dust devil or? <gasps> the mud's gone. Doesn't matter. They each found their own mud wallow. And you know, whatever it was, it really cooled me off. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, they make me so mad. I want to flip. Ah, ah, I'm the world's greatest inventor, not a pancake! Stop it! Jackpot! Oh, Find out what they're up to. Wait. Termites. Activate termite power. Here I come! Hey guys, ready for another worker in the colony? Okay, I get it. There are already millions of you. But have you seen two girls that smell strangely like savanna grass? Hmm, guess not. Did Aviva add a new feature to this suit? Whoa, my antenna are picking up a termite pheromone. Ah, oh, there it is a pathway of chemical pheromones that shows all the termites the way back to the nest. Okay, termite pals, let's ride this pheromone highway straight to your nest. And hopefully, Aviva and Koki are there. Oh yeah, this is the way to do it. Stick with one of the best termite finders on the planet. Lead me to him, Ardwolf. Imagine that, being able to hear termites chewing the ears. Oh, if only I could hear termites cutting grass like she can. Jackpot! You just can't hide from the hearing power of the Aardwolf. Ooh, then the tongue comes out. That fat, sticky tongue. It's the Aardwolf's built-in termite collector. Oh, hey, wait a second. Not so fast. One of those might be my friends. Slow down. You're like a machine. I know you can eat thousands in one sitting, but I can't keep up. Aviva! Koki! Aviva! Koki! 
If you see a couple that look like little people, just don't eat them, okay? Termite overload! Are we there yet? <laughs> All right already! You don't have to be so rough about it. Koki, look! What are they doing? I read about this during the food web challenge that we did. They grow a special fungus on the grass. That fungus helps break down the plant so that when the termites eat it, they get more energy. Whoa, so this is like a kitchen where they make the food for the whole colony. <gasps> Ew, no, I told you I'm not a piece of grass. Looks kind of pretty. Yeah, thanks. Okay, we have no idea where we are. No way to call for help, so there's only one thing to do. Make fungus hats? Hmm? No, we've got to find a way out of here. First, let's get this grass smell off of us so we don't get carried right back to the grass kitchens. Come on! I hope those creature bros are looking for us because I'm no termite expert. Who knows what's down these tunnels? It's amazing how wild turkeys have made such a comeback. 200 years ago, they were everywhere. One of the most plentiful birds in all of North America. And then when the Europeans arrived, they kept hunting the wild turkeys until by 1930, there were hardly any left. But then they were protected. And now they're making a comeback and are starting to show up in the country, backyards and parks. Where do you want me to park? Oh, there's good. All right, got the mobile invention kit. This will be the most challenging creature power suit yet. Trying to program. <laughs> Turkey powers. It's hard to say that with a straight face. We're here! We made it! We'll show you where the turkeys are. This way! All right! Hey! Wait for me! <gasps> you weren't kidding. You guys nailed it! Way to go! How do you know they're wild turkeys and not just farm turkeys that got loose? Well, it can be hard to tell, but wild turkeys tend to be a lot leaner and lighter. And the dead giveaway is that farm turkeys can't get off the ground. But wild turkeys can fly. There is no way those big birds can fly. <gasps> coyote! Oh, they know what that coyote wants to do. Yeah, exactly. Gobble you up. See, wild turkeys are smart, too. And they even speak English. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, 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 gobble. <laughs> We're not buying it. Gobble, 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 gobble. Gobble, gobble, oh. <laughs> Turkey stampede! Ah, they're not gonna get off the ground! Oh, yes, they are. Duck! 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 Ah. Ah. Turkeys! Whoa, okay, I'm buying it. Wild turkeys do fly. <laughs> Woo! Oh, and by the way, coyotes aren't really dangerous to people, regardless of how news media likes to portray them. But that's a whole other adventure. Look at that poult. That's what you call a baby turkey, a poult. Oh, he's lightning fast for a little guy. He's so cute. I've been hit by a poult of lightning. <gasps> and that's it. Your name's Lightning Poult. <laughs> Maybe just lightning would be better. Yeah, you're right. Lightning it is. Wow, for the world's tallest animals, giraffes are sure hard to find. I know. We found endangered frogs that are easier to spot. There's got to be some giraffe around here somewhere. <laughs> oh, hello. Martin, we found a giraffe. What? Where? Right there. <gasps> yeah. Oh, there. <gasps> You mean he found us. <laughs> first things first, if we're gonna understand what a giraffe's neck is all about, we gotta know how it's built. Great, let's get a measurement. All set, Chris. Two meters. That's taller than most people. A neck as long as a person. That's incredible. Whoa! 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 Just a little. Tied up here. Necktie. <laughs> That's a good name. Mind if we call you Necktie? Guys, stop messing around. I need to know how that neck's built. 
We're on it. I can see that, but I need to know what's in it. Scanning neck and uplinking image feed. Ooh. Neck inspection complete. Incoming scan image. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Same number of neck bones as we have, only the bones are much longer than ours, or a gazelle's. And what's that? Special valves on the blood vessels. It takes so much effort for the giraffe to pump blood all the way up to his head that he has an extra large heart and special blood vessels to keep the blood from flowing all the way back down. Wow, with all these special features, a long neck is definitely important for something. Ahem, reaching leaves. Neck battles. Anyway, this scan is what we need to replicate the neck for the power suits. If we just adjust the programming in a few places, it should work. Okay, disc maker, engage. All set. Aviva! Is the suit done yet? Just finish the disc, putting the suit back together now. Hurry! We don't want to lose this giraffe. Okay, okay, I'm going as fast as I can. Now are you done? Okay, easy, guys. I mean, really. Wait, did I install the deactivation module? We can't wait! Uh, okay, okay, yes, I'm done. There, all set. Jimmy? Uh, zap it! Whew. Pull that off in record time. No problem. Hey, these little things are good. You know, a lot of animals only see in black and white. But this is why most monkeys and apes see in color. To be able to spot colorful fruits amongst all the green. Oh, wow, if only we could get to those. <laughs> of course, a prehensile tail. A tail that can grab. <laughs> With a pad on the end that even helps it grab better. A tail that can grab that increases a spider monkey's reach and her overall ability to climb. This could be the greatest creature power suit yet! Don't forget prehensile tail. Okay, we're almost there. talons in the world. Close call. Whoa. Ah! 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 Yeah. Yes, <laughs> the old leaf glider trick never fails. Hey, Grabsy, I can't see. Get your hands. <laughs> Uh oh. Beach monkeys to Tortuga. Beach monkeys far away from the trees. Come in, Tortuga. Sending location. Hurry up, Chris. This is awesome. Miniaturize. It's starting. I think Orbit's starting to weave her orb web. Looks like she's sending the first strand in your direction. <gasps> Using the wind to blow it across. And touchdown, right on the mark. A few tugs to make sure it's secure, and she's off. Spinning another strand as she goes. Then she drops straight down to the center of that. <gasps> That's the beginning of the spokes of the web, like a bike tire. Whoa, I'm surfing the web. These threads aren't sticky yet. <laughs> that comes later, bro. After the structure's done. Oh, it will be soon. She's putting the spokes in. We gotta get a close look at her spinnerets. The silk comes right out of her abdomen, but how does she make it? Uploading a body scan for Aviva. 
This'll get her started on a spinneret prototype. I hope so, because this is the most beautiful silk in the world. No other spider has golden silk like this. And it's also one of the strongest spider silks on the planet. Beautiful and strong. Now that's a good combination. Keep spinning, Orbit. <laughs> Keep spinning, Davio. <laughs> Mm -mm. There, spider silk fabric. Ooh la la, so soft and light. Unlike anything I've ever touched. I love it. Oh, oh, we make teeny dresses for spiders. No, no, no. Dresses for me and other people who pay me for them. I need millions of spiders to do it. I need their silk, all of it. Oh. Get the jet, Davio. We're going to the rainforest. <laughs> Can I see that scan again, Koki? Coming up. Okay, so the web starts as a gloopy liquid, right here in the spider's body. Then the liquid gets squeezed out of the spinnerets. Yeah, all these tiny nozzles make up the spinneret. Each one shoots out a teeny strand, and together they make a thread of webbing. But the magic of the spinneret is that somehow, when the web liquid passes through, it hardens instantly, like that. That's the part scientists have had trouble with. Okay, got it. I'm ready to test this prototype spinneret. Jimmy, is the web mixture finished? <sighs> I thought you'd never ask. Let's do this thing. And now! Oh, sorry, Jay-Z. Well, that didn't work. Hmm, too watery. But don't think I'm giving up. I told you I'd show you the power of spider silk, and that's what I'm going to do. Well, you better get to it, because a spider doesn't just have one web mixture. She's got six. Six? That's right. Each one of these glands in her body makes a different type of webbing, each for a different purpose. Oh, no. I can't even get one of them right. Well, it hardened. Just a little late. No! Jimmy and I will stay here to make sure Zach doesn't try any funny business. Wow, you got here fast. Hola, Nina. Hey, Nina. Thanks for the Jaguar alarm. Wahoo! Which way did the Zackbots go? Every way. Whew, this is a tough one. How are we gonna find a black jaguar before Zack when any jaguar, black or orange, is so hard to find in the first place? Yeah, even though they are so big, the biggest cat in the Western Hemisphere, by the way, they are so secretive. They're harder to see than the camouflage tortuga. The tortuga? Where's the tortuga? Exactly. Hey, our best bet would be to find some jaguar spotting experts. And then they could help us. You're on. Jaguar spotting experts? Like putting spots on a jaguar? Or do you mean spotting, like seeing jaguars? Crab Rose, wait up! You know, creatures like spider monkeys, pacas, white lip peccaries, rainforest deer. Oh, I get it. Animals that a jaguar hunts. That's right, because these animals have to spot a jaguar before the jaguar spots them for survival. So, if we can find an animal who is the prey of a jaguar, like the spider monkey, for example, if they spot a jaguar, they would make a warning call. Whoa. Yeah, sort of like that. Then we would know there's a jaguar around. <laughs> ah, yes, the spider monkey alarm. Maybe they spotted a jaguar. <gasps> Look! A jaguar. My favorite wildcat. Absolutely stunning. What great camouflage. The jaguar's orange and black spotted pattern blends in with the beams of light and shadows of the forest floor, and the jaguar can virtually disappear. 
I bet a jaguar could sneak up behind you and you wouldn't even know it was there. We would know, wouldn't we? Well, yeah, of course we would. Come on, we're on the move. Spaceship has landed in a patch of Heliconia flowers. Well, not landed, actually. Hovered. A hummingbird almost always hovers when it eats. Spaceship is sipping nectar from flowers. A clear, sugary liquid called nectar is what gives the hummingbird his energy. He spends most of his time drinking that sugary water so he can get enough energy for his high-action flying. In fact, a hummingbird has to drink nectar every 10 minutes or so, or else he won't be able to fly. <gasps> hey, that's it. While he's busy sipping nectar, that's when we can touch him. I'm on it. Launching zipline. We'll show Koki that we can touch a hummingbird. Go ahead. I'm watching. Hmm. Zipline lock and ready for zipping. While Spaceship is busy sipping nectar, we'll just zip by and touch him before he can even react. <laughs> right behind you, bro. Oh, almost had him. Keep going, bro. We'll get him this time. Yeah. Uh oh, so close. Oh. Spaceship's too quick for us. This is getting embarrassing. And it's gonna be so easy to touch a hummingbird. So easy to touch a hummingbird. So easy, so easy, so easy. It's gonna be simple. It's gonna be simple. So easy, simple. So easy, simple. It's gonna be simple, simple. We'll show you. <laughs> okay, okay. Touching a hummingbird might be a little more challenging than anticipated. But with a little help from our other animal friends. Oh, yeah. Fight creature powers with other creature powers, I always say. And besides, that hummingbird has got to rest sometime. Good luck. Aha, a hummingbird. Now that little bird has some delicious energy. But then, where is all the hummingbird energy so nicely packaged? Ha ha! In their eggs! Chocolate-covered hummingbird eggs would make an excellent energy snack. <laughs> hmm. All right, let's try out Harpy Eagle powers. Uh, hi! Activate, Activate creature powers! powers. The Harpy Eagle is the ultimate aerial hunter of the rainforest. Short, powerful wings designed for flying through the underbrush. These powers will let us touch the hummingbird. <gasps> Their spaceship, let's go. This is where we can find some of the most tucked away weird creatures of all. Yeah, talk about remote. Mark, Chris, we're trying to touch down near you, but there's one little problem. We have no idea where you are. What is that crazy place? Yeah, by the looks of it, that forest isn't matching anything in my database of habitats of the world. Well, this is a pretty secret habitat. Not many people know about it or the creatures who live here. It's like a different planet. <gasps> wow! A rare Euroxis! Whoa, lots of Euroxis! Wait a second. How big are you guys right now? What do you mean? I knew it! You're a beetle size, and that's a creature's fur, not a habitat. Oh, you're right. It is a creature's fur, and we are miniaturized. But it is a habitat, too. A micro habitat that hundreds of bugs call home. See, a lot of them can munch on the algae that grows right here on the fur. That's the ultimate creature link. One creature leads to another creature. Okay, 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 we gotta know. What creature is that? Who are you on? Oh, here he is. Welcome to planet 
three-toed sloth. Now that looks like an alien. <laughs> yeah, but a cute one. Yes, sloths. <laughs> Today's gonna be pretty easy because that's a creature who knows how to chillax. Chillax? Yeah, chill out and relax. Chillax. See, this is how you chillax. <sighs> chillax, yeah, that'll work. That's what we'll name him, Chillax. Whoa! Whoa! Slow and steady. That's the sloth's way. Oh, yeah, we're about to reach top speed. He's in high gear now. He's heading for that leaf. Go, Chillax, go! Yeah! Time! Oh, nice work! Less than one-sixth of a kilometer per hour. That's record time for the world's slowest mammal. Yeah, there are so many different kinds of amazing life forms on the reef. Hmm. You mean like these guys? Seahorses! Seahorses? I thought you were riding regular horses. Well, uh, our plans kind of changed. We're checking out seahorses now. You know, I've always wondered about seahorses. Yeah, me too. With a head like a horse. And it's got a prehensile tail like a monkey. What, what are, are they? they? Okay, I'll tell you. But you better sit down for this. What are they? Seahorses are fish! What? Oh. They fell over anyway. Maybe we should have told him to sit on the floor. Yeah, next time. What do you mean seahorses are fish? How can a seahorse be a fish? Hmm. Here, I'll show you. Okay. Here's a fish. Then, what Mother Nature did was take this fish and change its head, and then stretch it out, so it was more like this. And then bent the body down this way, and then its tail changed from a swimming tail to a tail that can grab. So, a seahorse looks pretty different, but it's still a kind of fish. And there's a reason for the seahorse's unique shape. It doesn't swim all over the place like most other fish. It swims small distances by moving its little dorsal fin back and forth. But most of the time, the seahorse uses its prehensile tail to grab onto grasses and coral and just hang there until food floats by. Whoa, I get it, but it's still kind of weird. So its body design is perfect for its way of living. Exactly. Hey, but that doesn't mean we have to stop riding horses. Let's ride these guys. Uh, Martin, they're seahorses, and they're tiny. Oh, okay, so I'll give our seahorse a smaller name. I'll call you Ocean Pony. And then we can miniaturize and ride. Whoa, wait a second. You guys shouldn't just use miniaturization technology for playing around. This is serious technology. Well, uh, uh, of course we have to do research on the short-snouted seahorse, Hippocampus Hippocampus, to uh, explore how this seahorse um, interacts with other inhabitants of the coral reef system. Yes, of course. Next one, bro. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh-huh. When you two play around with technology, something usually goes wrong. If you're going to use the miniaturizer, you'd better get a lot of info on seahorses. I'm going to prep my invention station for seahorse power disc creation. And I'll be checking in on you. Hmm. Soon. OK, guys, let's do this. Catching fish dolphin style. Guys, that click whistle must mean something like circle the fish. No problem. I'm with you, guys. Oops, sorry, wrong way. This way, right? Ha, I got this now. We're herding the fish into a tight ball, a bait ball. This is genius. Talk about a smart creature. And by communicating, you can cooperate and work together. Oh, up. Got it. That whistle means move them up. You're pushing them right to the surface, aren't you? 
so they'll have nowhere to escape to. <laughs> Brilliant! Oh, now the feast begins. Dinner time for dolphins. No wonder they're one of the smartest creatures on Earth. A language, smart hunting strategy, and one of the largest brains for their size. I hear it too. Come on, let's check it out. <gasps> there he is! Whistle! We found you! Come on, Click! Let's go! Let's get him! What's wrong? Okay, fine, I'll get him. Oh, that's what that little Click Whistle meant. Couldn't he have just said, SHARK! Swim so fast, so maneuverable. I'm like a torpedo. Guess I was too much for him. Uh. Oh. Whoa. 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 <gasps> uh oh. Just kidding. Nice sharky. Are you up to now? Buddy, you're acting strange. Why are you stuffing a sponge into the sand? A dolphin who likes to clean up? That's a first. Weird. It's almost like she's poking around for something. Looking for something. Hmm. Echolocation engaged. Who can find it first? Whatever it is. Nothing but sand underneath more sand. You sure there's something around here? Amazing! That sponge she uses is to protect her nose when she shovels in the rough sand. Hey, I was just about to find that fish. <laughs> hey, another female bullfrog. <gasps> she laid eggs. Yeah, about 10,000 of them. The eggs are protected in a clear, gooey, slime-like substance. Predators find this stuff tastes disgusting, and so the jelly protects the developing eggs. Ooh, jelly! <laughs> the predators are right! It tastes awful! But the good thing that can get past the slime is water. Fresh water can move easily in and out of the slime to freshen the developing eggs. And nothing is more important to frog eggs than being in healthy, clean water. If there's pollution in the water, it can get into the eggs. The slime can't protect them from that. Eggs that develop in polluted water develop into frogs with strange and sad deformities. Five legs, three eyes, and more. Hey, there's something black and wriggling in the eggs over here. Yes, this is the beginning of stage two of the frog's life cycle. The eggs are about to hatch. Let's wait and watch while it happens. This will work. No nosy people around to complain. All right, Zackbots, time to clean out my workshop. Roll out the barrels and let's pump this goo out. Let's see, right in there. That's better. One thing I can't stand is a messy laboratory. They're hatching. Yeah, we've got tadpoles. Stage two of the frog's life cycle has begun. It's amazing that tadpoles are baby frogs. They just look like heads with tails. Yeah, they don't look anything like frogs yet. Hey. <laughs> uh, does my hair look green to you? <laughs> Sorry, buddy. The algae's over there. These tadpoles hatch hungry. And within a week, 
their transformation begins. Next, they grow hind legs like this guy. Then the tail begins to be reabsorbed into the body and tiny front legs sprout out. And then the tail is absorbed completely. The front legs grow, the body shape changes, and ta-da, a froglet. And now this little frog is truly amphibious, living in the water and on land. He'll stay in the shape, but every year get bigger and bigger and bigger. And believe it or not, a bullfrog can live for 25 years. Pretty cool, huh, Viva? Viva? Oh no, there are so many changes in frog development. Such precision timing and programming to integrate with DNA coding. Wait, Aviva, don't worry. Whoa. Oh. Oh, 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 I love frogs. The front flippers power the turtle swim by pumping up and down. And the rear flippers provide the steering. Okay, so we need long flippers in the front with hydraulic pistons for flapping power, and back here, shorter flippers with rotational capabilities for steering. Check. We're heading up. Hi, Aviva. Hi, guys. The turtle can stay underwater for a long time. About 10 minutes for a high action dive, and up to 40 minutes for a low action dive but always has to come up for air. Okay, so it looks like the hawksbill turtle breathes from nostrils at the top of its snout. So why don't we put the tortuga's new air intake valves right here? And I'll install bigger air tanks inside for oxygen storage. Hey, Jimmy. Huh? Could you take the master key out of the ignition interface? We don't want to have the tortuga accidentally starting when we're in the middle of a modal retrofit. Got them. And hang on to them. They're our only set. I got them. What are you guys up to anyway? Well, it looks like we're getting a turtleback tour of the reef. Hey, there's Blimpy the Blowfish. Oh, yeah. And our old buddy Ocean Pony the Seahorse. And hey, there's, uh, I don't remember him. Yeah, that's because he's somebody new. A, a tiger, tiger shark. shark. Whoa! Hold on tight, Chris. I'm holding, I'm holding. Ah! Chris! Whoa! The tiger shark is gaining. Whoa! Oh! Whoa, our sea turtle is using his shell like a shield. And that's what I'm gonna name you, Shield. <gasps> but how long can Shield keep this up? Look at these teeth. Based on size, tiger shark's jaws are even stronger than the great white shark's jaws. If that shark gets the shell in his mouth or a flipper in his mouth, Shield is done for. Shield has another plan. I hope so. Whew, that was close. <sighs> and another great defense for the Hawksbill sea turtle, hiding in the reef. Yeah, and that's why Hawksbills are reef turtles, so they can use the coral reef structure to feed them and hide them. Yeah, the shield defense is great when a hawksbill is caught out in the open, but the surefire plan is to hide out in the protection of the reef. Woohoo! This is fun! Yeah, it's even better than a trampoline! Hey, where'd Puffy go? Puffy! Puffy! No way! A grouper! You didn't! Puffy! Puffy, it's you! You're all blown up like a giant spiky water balloon. Nice defense. Uh-oh, Mayday! Now we've got a problem. It's a great defense, and most fish know never to mess with a blowfish, but... For those that don't, 
Sometimes blowfish can get stuck inside a grouper's mouth, and then both fish could die. Hang on, Puffy. We'll get you out of there. Okay, grouper. You might feel a prick. Oh, if only Puffy could deflate just a little bit. He's too scared. If he deflates at all, he thinks the grouper might swallow him. Well, these guys will eat anything. It's not working, Martin. I'm going in. Going in? Where? Through the gills. No, you're not. I'll push, you pull. Okay, just remember, one wrong move and you're lunch. <laughs> Pretty stinky in here. Oh, grouper breath. Ready, Martin? Ready, go! <laughs> Uh, gotta get you free! Uh, we did it. Uh, amazing that he can blow up three times his size. And look, now this grouper knows never mess with a blowfish. It's a fish eat fish world out here. Yeah, and only the fish with good protection survive. And guess what? We don't have any. I hope Aviva and Koki are tracking us down somehow, because we just might not last. Whoa! Look at them go! The Roadrunner's gaining! Oh, no! We have to find another mystery lizard. Wow! I never realized a Roadrunner is as big as a chicken. And twice as fast. I gotta see that again. Okay, Roadrunner, show us your stuff. On your marks, get set, run! Uh, run! Go, race off! Uh, Roadrunners don't listen very well. Speedometer, we need a speedometer! Whoa, 42 kilometers an hour! That makes the Roadrunner one of the fastest running birds in the world. Oh, and check out that aerodynamic running posture. But with his head down, he's not running with his head out. I don't think he can see where he's going because he's running right into a cactus. <laughs> of course, we should have seen that coming. A road runner can fly, but he just prefers to run most of the time. Oh, I love how the road runner uses vantage points like cactus or rocks to perch and scan for prey. And then when he spots something, he runs off after it. Oh, and what a great creature power that would be to have. Could you imagine? Roadrunner powers. This should be a good spot to find the Martin. Oh, yeah. Oh, I hope we got here in time. Yeah, they should be coming out right about now. Hmm, no sign of them yet. So now we wait. <gasps> Look, they're coming out. Ho oh, ho! Polyps! They're everywhere. Wow, they're beautiful. You mean these colorful things are creatures? They look like flowers. Oh yeah, they're animals, all right. Every one of them is a creature. And check it out. The hard, rocky part is their skeleton. See, they build a skeleton outside their bodies, and they can hide inside it, protect it until they're ready to come out. You mean this whole reef is made of the skeletons of these little guys? That's right. Polyp skeleton built on polyp skeleton built on more polyp skeletons for millions of years. And now millions of creatures live here, in and amongst the coral. More different types of sea creatures than any other ocean habitat. Yeah, but we know these reefs are fragile habitats, and if we're gonna do our annual reef checkup to make sure it's healthy, we better get to it. Okay, let's get in there for a close look, guys. On it! Ah! Uh, well, uh, ooh, ooh, ah close enough? Woo. Oh, bro! You just got harpooned! What? Harpooned? You have to zoom in with a microscope to see it. But the polyp shot that tiny needle-like harpoon from his tentacle. That's how they hunt for food. Hey, what are you harpooning me for? I'm not food. Ah, uh, here comes some stuff that's probably tastier than you. Ultra zoom on. That's what they love to eat. 
amphipods. And see, there are the harpoons ready for launch. Ooh, he did it. He scored some lunch. He reels it in with his harpoon, and the tentacles push the little meal to his mouth right down there in the center. <laughs> wow, I like these little guys. And all this time, I thought coral was just a bunch of rocks. Hey, what are you doing? Leave that coral alone. Those fish are destroying the reef. <gasps> so that's why the coral reefs are disappearing. Those reef-eating fish. Whoa, not so fast. They're parrotfish, Aviva, and they're not why the reefs are in trouble. Check it out. He's scraping algae off the coral with his hard beak and eating it. And he does kill and even eat some polyps while he's at it. But he's also keeping the algae from taking over and choking out the reef. Hmm. Whoa, now that's a creature built to handle the winter. A snowshoe hare. Amazing. He just walks right on top of the snow. He's a snow walker. Look at those huge feet. That's what keeps him from sinking in. Oh no, the fresh snow is burying the hispid tracks. Come on, we gotta hurry or we'll never find those hispids. Hispids, hispids, where are you? Hispids, where are you? Hispids, are you out there? Do you see the tracks? I can't see anything except white. If we're having this much trouble in the deep stuff, imagine the little hispids. <gasps> hey, buddy. Wow, if we could get around like that, it'd be so much easier to find those hairs. Even though he's a different kind, he'll help us figure out where his cousin, the hispid hair, might go. I've got the miniaturizer. Hey, let's see if he'll give us a ride. Miniaturize! Hey, where'd he go? He disappeared. Here's Snowshoe Hair! Where are you? Oh, we keep losing hairs today. Whoa! Avalanche! <laughs> there you are! Oh, that was a pretty good tumble you gave me. So I'll give you a good name. Avalanche! Hey, do you think you could help us out? We're looking for three lost hairs, and we need a ride. Whoa, these big feet sure would help. The way they spread out your weight so you don't sink in the snow. <laughs> if people had feet like this, our feet would be about 10 times bigger than they are. Ah! Not only that, they're covered with fur even on the bottom. That makes their feet even bigger, keeps them warm in the snow, and gives them traction when they're running. So thanks for the ride, Avalanche. Just go where hairs go, and we just might be able to track down the hispids. We're hairback riding! Yeehaw! Okay, I'm in close. Suspect climbing tree. Uh-huh. He uses those special toes, two in the front, two in the back, to help with climbing. And the stiff tail feathers brace against the trunk for support. Thanks, Chris. Keep the data coming. So, is he drilling yet? Not yet. But those features are keys to drilling. <gasps> Martin, you in position? He's heading your way. The woodpecker has landed. Oh, yes, he's doing it. He's drilling. Wow, that's fast. His head's a blur. Wow, that's 16 woodpecker pecks a second. Impressive. <laughs> I'm going to call him Headbanger. Look at the wood chips fly. I knew it. I told you. How much evidence do you need? This woodpecker must be drill happy or something. He's just drilling holes everywhere. Hang on, Aviva, not so fast. Something's not right. The holes look different. Yeah, this hole looks different. Hmm. It's bigger, more rectangular. I don't like those smaller round holes in the dying trees. Well, if you guys need more evidence, go ahead. But to me, it's case closed. When you're ready to admit that I was right about this guy, you can find me back at the Tortuga. With an analysis of this feather, maybe I'll even have another suit by the time you guys are done. Hey, wait for me! Oh, 
Okay, Chris, Headbanger stopped off at a dead tree. Maybe it's hideout. I'm going in. Nice digs. So this is one of the things you can build with that drilling power. A cozy, safe nest in a dead tree to hide out from bad weather and predators. Oh, and I can see why so many animals use your nest when you're done with it. Wood ducks, bats, lots of birds, raccoons, even squirrels, especially in winter. What? Uh-oh, a pine martin. Oh no, up here, the nest is safe for most predators, but not from that tree-loving weasel. Ah! <gasps> oh, go, go, oh no, ah! Yes! <laughs> An exit hole! Oh, pileated woodpeckers build multiple entrances and escapes! Brilliant! Uh-oh. Uh, pine martins are squirrel hunters too! Bye! No! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> oh, um, Martin? So what do you do when you're face to face with a venomous rattlesnake with three centimeter fangs that can strike in the blink of an eye and is attracted to movement? Don't move, bro. See ya! <sighs> Whew! Now that was a close up look at one awesome snake. Oh, <laughs> you can say that again. How about that rattle? It's made of special loose scales that rub up against each other to make that rattling sound. And it's that rattle that makes the rattlesnake the most polite snake. Polite? How is a rattlesnake polite? Well, he always rattles you a friendly warning before he strikes and sinks his venom-injecting fangs into your arm. <laughs> or your face. And you know, when I was face to face with this guy, I had a real close look at how his face is packed with incredible sensory powers. Sharp eyes that can see well in the daylight. Nostrils that have a good sense of smell. And a tongue that flicks in and out, tasting the air. Making that good sense of smell great. Plus, there's another sense that, huh? What was that? Oh, he seems to know and wants to get closer to it. But if we can't see it, how can he? <gasps> he must be using the other sensory organ, those pits, right under his nostrils. Those pits that sense the body heat of animals. Those pits that give the rattlesnake the ability to see heat and find his prey. Like a ground squirrel. Ha, he knew that's what it was because a rattlesnake can see heat. And so can we with our heat vision goggles. Nice. Turning on. Hi, Chris, do you see me? Oh yeah, Martin, you're waving? Okay, then now what am I doing? You just jumped into a ninja pose. <laughs> okay, my turn. Turning on. Huh? Oops, I think I have these goggles on upside down. Nope, they're on right. I'm doing a handstand. Now what am I doing? You're walking like an Egyptian. You got it. Woohoo, <laughs> yeah! Oh, <laughs> yeah! Hey, look. <gasps> They went in there. I know. Let's get around to underground the way a rattlesnake does, by going through the ground squirrel tunnels. We don't even have to dig. I bet those tunnels will lead us right to some tellurium somewhere down there. We can see with our heat vision goggles. Miniaturization, anyone? Whoa. Find out which are sharper, yeah, cactus spines or mountain lion claws. Oh, hi, Spotted Skunk. Sorry we bumped into your home. And even more sorry we brought her. Ooh, the skunk foot stop warning. He's tiny, but tough. A one kilogram creature telling a 50 kilogram wildcat to back off. Now that's impressive. A handstand? Hey, nothing like a little gymnastics to ease a tense situation. Anything but. He's puffed up to look bigger and tougher, showing the warning black and white colors. He's saying, last chance before I... Ooh, skunked! That was a direct hit. 
from three and a half meters away. What aim, what precision. And that mountain lion is not happy. He's out of here. Skunk stink defense, it's genius. Whoa, that's bad. <laughs> like, let's get out of here, bad. Quick! <laughs> we owe you one, buddy. <laughs> Yuck. Hey, you. We're almost back to my house. Yeah, he's heading for the shade under your porch. Whoa! Hold on! Another heel monster! 12 o'clock! Look out! Both are males! When they meet, I think we're gonna have a rarely seen before creature moment. A, a heel monster, monster battle! heel monsters may be slow, but when they strike, they never let go. These are one of the heaviest lizards in North America, and they are throwing their weight around. This makes it easy. I'm gonna name him Lockjaw, because when he bites, he locks on. But which one's Lockjaw? He's the one that lives under my house, and he's awesome. Whoa, he got a hold, and he got a hold. They both got a hold. Wow, he love bite. Okay, now this is some power that can easily take on Zack Bots. Powerful bites and tough beaded skin to protect from bites. Add those muscular limbs, impressive claws. Which give the Gila Monster his fantastic digging powers. This is exactly the kind of information I need in order to make my Gila Monster power suits. Oh yeah! Okay, today it's a tie. This is springtime and Lockjaw and the other Gila Monsters are most concerned with filling up their bellies. Hey, Aviva, thanks for getting started on those Gila Monster power. Whoa. Oh. Oh. And don't forget, Gila Monsters have bumpy scales. Whoa. Oh. It's gonna be fun to try those suits out. Uh, Fawn, we'll have to wait. We forgot to mention we've got a creature crisis. While you've been observing this Gila Monster, Zack's been collecting others all over the Sonoran Desert, and we're not sure what he's up to. I've got some good observations to start with, but I need my inventing equipment pronto. Jimmy, can you bring the Tortuga over to Javier's house? Sure thing. Great, I'm on it. Hey, Aviva, when you're programming the creature powers, don't forget about tremendous bite strength and scales like round beads, a powerful strike, warning colors. Oh, Venom. I've got it, I've got it. Look, the Gila Monster's going back to my house. Hey, how'd you guys do that? He really likes the Gila Monster now. How'd you change his mind? It wasn't us. It was the coolness of the Gila Monster. <laughs> and as the day gets hotter, the Gila Monster has to find a cool place to rest. He's got that scaly skin to keep the moisture in, but even this lizard can't stand the intense heat of the high desert sun. That's why he likes it under my porch. Yeah. But what does Zack like about Gila monsters? Okay, now this cold-blooded lizard is the height of creature cool. There's no way we can let Zack collect them, and we've got to rescue the ones he's already caught. But what could Zack be up to? Whoa! <laughs> Walk much, bro? <laughs> I tripped. Tripped? Over sand? No, over something in the sand. Gila, Gila monster eggs. eggs? Cool. I have Gila monster eggs under my porch? And there aren't many Gila monsters left. Every egg, every Gila monster is precious. We've got to stop Zack and return the Gila monsters back, living free and in the wild. Koki, Javier, you guys stay here and protect Logjaw and the eggs so Zack can't get them. Got it. If Zack tries to mess with the Gila monsters, hmm, I'll bite him. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll go rescue the others. Real size. 2,356. 2,357. Uh, we gotta stop running into you like this. <laughs> oh, great. Now we find out you like to sit on people's heads. Would have been a lot less painful if we'd known that before. Ow. At least now we can get a good look at this little elf owl's features. Like those eyes, they're huge. That's right. 
I'm checking out the scan you got. And according to my analysis, owls have eyes that are up to 100 times better at seeing in the dark than ours are. Yeah, and even though they can't move them around like we can, they can turn their heads completely backward, like ow, like we can't do. Oh. That's how it's done. Great, that's owl sensory power number one, eyesight. Now let's check out that hearing. We need owl-powered ears. Elvis here can show us that too. Elvis? Like the famous singer? No, Elvis. Elvis the elf owl. That's what I'm naming him. Stop, hold ah! everything. Huh? Ow! Missed one. What's up, Aviva? I just realized Koki and Jimmy aren't back yet. They're super late. Well, just call them. I did, no answer. Oh, Koki's the communication queen. She wouldn't be late without calling. What if something went wrong? Yeah. Okay, well, just keep trying to reach them. We'll put the Elf Owl adventure on hold and be right there. Sorry, Elphys. Emergency. We'll catch up with you later. Uh, I love taking a nap outside on the first warm day of spring. You are so cute, whoever you are. I love spring. Warm air, green grass, flowers like buttercups and dandelions, and fluffy, cute little baby animals. Is that what you want your name to be? Dandelion? <laughs> Dandelion it is. Hello, everyone. Hope you're enjoying this gorgeous spring day. And guess what? I've been inspired by something wonderful, and I'm going to make a new creature power suit. <gasps> what? Ooh. Really? A new creature power suit? Okay, so what creature powers do you have in mind, Aviva? Yeah, where is this super-powered mystery creature? Uh, he's right in front of you. Huh? Hmm. Oh, you. You mean a groundhog? And groundhog powers? I mean, he is impossibly cute. But besides cutting a really nice lawn, what kind of super cool power does a groundhog have? What are you talking about? He's perfect. Don't get us wrong. We love groundhogs. I'm just not sure if a groundhog is a creature that really inspires a creature power suit. Well, I'm sure groundhogs have some hidden superpower that is so amazing. Don't you have an amazing superpower? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Well, we could try. I mean, Aviva is really into groundhogs. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe, possibly, somehow, there's some cool ability to make a groundhog power suit. <gasps> that must be Dandelion's mom. Okay, let's get creature adventuring. Weight, four kilograms. Body temperature, 37 degrees. Just like us. Heartbeat, 90 beats per minute. And she eats and eats and eats. <laughs> Groundhogs eat so much grass each day, enough to fill up a sink. But I don't think that's a talent that makes for a good creature power suit. Huh? Okay, hey. thanks, Chris. Those groundhog basics are just what I need to get a groundhog power suit started. Have a nice breakfast, dandelion. I'll be back soon. Ah, it is really cool how a groundhog digs a burrow into a field and then grazes out from the burrow entrance. A groundhog rarely eats grass more than three and a half meters from its burrow. So whenever she senses a predator, she can quickly escape to the safety of her burrow. The burrow, ha! Hey, that's something. Groundhogs are great diggers. See, the burrow's usually dug under a pile of rocks or tree roots. There's a drop down right after the entrance, then a long tunnel that opens up to a chamber. There can also be a special hibernation chamber and then other escape entrances and exits. And a groundhog does all that digging herself. I mean, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> okay, we must be under at least 20 centimeters of snow down here. I got blankets. Yeah, gotta bundle up. 
Listen, Roland, you gotta get out of this deep freeze. Yeah, you can come back to the Tortuga, it's warm there, and we'll help you figure out how to get wherever you're going. Whew, a little warm in here, isn't it? Yeah, it is kind of warm. But there's snow all around us. It should be freezing. <gasps> I'm burning up! <gasps> what? It's warmer down here than it was up there. Warm gear off! <sighs> that, that's better. Woo! Yeah, but what's with the warmth down here? What's with <gasps> the voles down here? Whoa, it's a whole colony of them living in a snow cave. Huh. Martin, do you realize where we are? Do you realize where we are? The, the Subnivian zone. zone. A secret creature world under the snow, where it's warmer than up above. Because the snow is like a giant blanket holding in the Earth's heat. So even if it's super cold, like 50 degrees below zero up there, under the snow, it stays much warmer, right around zero degrees all the time. Cozy, right, Rolo? Wait, Rolo, wait for us! Whoa, whoa! Sorry, buddy! Watch the bull traffic, bro! Is that what you call rest and relaxation? Yep. Rest and relaxation doesn't involve running around like crazy. I thought you wanted to rest on a beach. I do, and I'm an engineer, so I'm going to bring the beach to me with this. Ta-da! The Insta Beach Heat Amplifier. Did someone say beach? See, the solar panels collect the sun's rays, amplify the heat, and make a beam of warm weather. It's an instant beach vacation. I'll get the sand. If those crap brothers want to be late, we'll just start our vacation without them. Where is she going? Who knows? Uh-uh. Coming through. Hey, I'm driving here. Left side. Look out! Whoa! Whoa. Whew, made it. Oh, that's the end of the line. Hey, what's she up to now? Whoa! Uh. Hey, watch where you're going, pal. Chris? Chris! Rolo, you're a mama. Oh, those babies are so cute. Well, except that one. Hey, shh, they're sleeping. Creature pod ringers off. We don't want to wake these guys up. Ringer off. Oh, bath before bed? Good idea. I can't believe it. Babies under the snow while it's still winter time? Most animals wait until spring to have their babies. But because of the cozy Subnivian zone, foals can keep having babies even in the winter. That's the power of the Subnivian zone. And the voles sure know how to use it. Whoa! What? Whoa! Oof. Aw, no fair. <laughs> they also know who's a baby vole and who's not. <laughs>